Brandon Gross. And we are the Game Changers. Designers, creatives alike. We are in a world that runs on value. Our next designs will be the shiniest. Our next animation will be the most buttery. Ladies and gentlemen, Game Changers, let the games begin! What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Editor X Live with me, your host, Brandon Gross. I am super excited today because it is the very first, it's the beginning of a new month. And like we have done in the past, or at least in the past month, what we've done is do two live streams in the beginning of the month to really give you guys an in-depth, end-to-end experience, a really just video or live stream, really just seeing how I designed this or a particular project and bring it all the way through from design to actually a finished product or finished pro yeah finished project or finished page <laughs> so with that said i want to first welcome you guys in the live chat i want to say hello feel free i know a lot of you guys are also coming from adp list so welcome so for those of you who are brand new to editor x editor x is a no code platform for designers like us or just creatives in general that allows us in ui or ux designers to create the things that we love to design and bring that to life without having to write without having to write a line of code so what we're going to be doing today as the title suggests is creating a pokemon website the desktop version today we're going to take around somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours depending on uh really how much time we need but other than that tomorrow we are going to take what we do today and just continue to make the website responsive so this is a two-day event we are trying we are going to be working two hours at max but this is a conversation and really just a time for us to just watch the process ask questions about editor x ask questions about design uh career things of that nature so because i know we have a very diverse group of people joining our conversation today and even watching this after the fact so feel free to not only watch hang out and uh enjoy what we're going to be doing here we're going to try to take things be a little bit more lackadaisical i know in the past we have done like a quick one hour segment but there's a lot of people who still have questions um who are brand new to edit rec so we're trying to broaden the time span to around two hours so there's a little bit more value other than just design that we can spread in here as well so with that said let's actually hop into what we're doing today and if you guys have any questions or just want to say hi do so by saying hello in the chat all right with that said let me make sure all right we are good to go so so what we are doing today is pretty straightforward. So I, you guys saw on basically, if you're watching on YouTube, the main screen that we are going to build today is this, but we're gonna do a little bit of a twist, okay? What I want us to do is I want there to be a little bit of a hover and click interaction with this. So I want the immediate site to be this, right? And then on hover of the Pokeball, it basically twists a little bit, it gets a red highlight, and then when we click it, it essentially pops open. This little shine here takes width of the entire screen, just like this, so it becomes a white screen. Then a gradient fills over top, and then we transition to our final page, and we're able to close out and go back to our sort of first Pokeball here. And eventually, the thought behind this was like, wouldn't it be cool to have like three Pokeballs just like in, you know, in the Pokemon games where you're able to pick uh, your starter Pokemon? What if there was like three Pokeballs and, and each one brought you to a different Pokeball? And I was like, well, we don't have that much time to do that today, even though we might be able, we might be able to uh, get carried away and, and do some of that, maybe duplicate some things. But that's really our, um, our goal for today. To start off with something like this, have a hover interaction, a click interaction, and then eventually fade our web page into this experience here. And then tomorrow, which will be super short, or maybe we'll be able to do it today, but we will have breaking this desktop version into our mobile version. So that's what we're gonna be working on. In the chat, we have Simon, what's going on, my friend? And in the chat, we have fi Fine T Run, amazing ideal. Glad to have you. I think it's the first time I've seen you in, uh, in the community, my friend. Nice to have you here. 
All right, so let's begin. And because we're doing kind of things really slowly or uh, a little bit less lackadaisical, before I would have had already exported all of my assets. I have not done a single of any of that. So you guys are literally going to see me go from the design, how I export everything, how I put it into EditorX, and uh, we're just seeing if that is valuable to you guys. And we would love to know in the chat if it is at the end of today's segment. So I'm just going to start exporting some of my assets here. So I want to export Pokemon as a PNG, and I also want to make sure I actually might have moved ahead of myself and exported a few things. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna export this as this logo. I'm actually gonna name it. So we're gonna call this Pokemon logo. And of course you probably wanna name everything. Okay, like you guys are gonna see like behind, behind, behind the scenes today <laughs> of how all this stuff is going to work. All right, so I'm gonna just gonna save it in this folder here. Pokemon boom, select folder. Yep, export, good to go. And now with this other stuff, there's a lot actually to export with this Pokeball, but let's do it step by step. So first off we have, I'm gonna use this one because I think I grouped this one a little bit better. So we have the top and we have this bottom here. Let me go ahead and try to select this. This is also guys, why you keep your layers nice and organized. So I'm gonna group this stuff. And I'm gonna name this top. I'm just call this Pokeball Top. And I am gonna grab this bottom and call this Pokeball Bottom. Because all this is gonna make sense when <laughs> it's going to be needed once we start getting into the website building side of things. Sean Mick. What's going on, my friend? Howdy, I'm new here. Thanks for making these super cool videos. Sean, glad to have you and glad that you have so welcomed us with your, your presence today. And uh, yeah, Sean, I, I'm out of curiosity. I would love to know how you found our videos. And um, I'm glad that you have been enjoying them. Akash, what's going on? Glad to have you here as well, my friend. And yeah, so anybody who is new, I would really love, it's very helpful for me to know where you guys have really found our content, whether that be YouTube through ADP list and just overall, if this content is for you guys. So if you guys are able to be like, Hey Brandon, we like this type of content or I joined because of this, we want to know that so we can make more of that content for you guys. So <laughs> we can't just, you know, we can not only just entertain you, but help you learn the things that you want. So glad to have you here. And we hope to be giving you more of what you want in terms of content. All right, so we have our top, we have our bottom. Um, I also do want to, I think for this, I'm gonna export these as SVGs. So I'm gonna call this Facebook. This will be our Instagram, and this will be our Twitter pieces. So I see Fine T has a question. So you created vector art part with Adobe XD, and now you're doing the file transfer to Editor X Media Manager. Exactly. So basically, I'm just preparing my assets so that I can upload them to Editor X and start preparing the website. So you are correct. Ah, Sean says, I saw you hosting a, a group session on ADP list. Perfect. There's a lot of people on ADP list that do like these sessions and some that are like, eh. <laughs> so it's always nice to uh, and refreshing to uh, kind of really see what types of people from ADP list like these sessions and what they get out of them most because a lot of people are looking for mentoring a lot of people are looking for um, you know career advice and some people are looking just for for straight technical skills so if you're looking for technical skills a good time and a conversation about really any of the following things I had mentioned <laughs> you're in the right place but out of curiosity Sean um, what do you obviously if you're on ADP list you're looking for to either get into What's gonna call it? Into design or what brought you to ADP list? And while you answer that, I'm gonna go ahead and just export my socials here. Um, I believe I already exported the top and bottom of my Pokeball. And now there are some small artifacts. Like for example, I'm gonna export this uh, this shine here. So I'm going to, it's already called hover shine. I'm just gonna control E and I'm going to export that here. Okay, the rest of these I am going to 
grab. So this is, I'm gonna call this top win. I'm just gonna name all my assets here. This is white lightning. And we're gonna do red lightning. So, I swear I can't spell. But what's really important, and for those of you who just context in what Editor X is yet again, um, you know, in the UI UX world, we're taught that, you know, a lot of graphic designers move their way into UI UX. And they have a strong graphic design base, but then they're met with UX, which is basically, you know, from a graphic design standpoint, we're dealing with behavior, not behavior, we're dealing with emotions, psychology from an aesthetic perspective. UI is sort of the same thing. UX is psychology and behavior of action, getting people to take a specific action based on what are called funnels or uh, basically by getting people from one state, one action to take them to take action on another either be in another state or take another action uh, based on how we take them or lead them through things. So where EditorX comes into the space of UI UX is, you know, UI UX designers do the graphical aesthetic plus the behavioral side of developing a product. With EditorX, you can actually, without the development knowledge, be able to build and design your thing, literally bring your designs to life um, without code. That's why I like the platform. Um, I forgot what I'm naming these. <laughs> that's why I like the, the platform. And, you know, that's really why I think it is important for people on the AD list, ADP list platform to really know that this stuff exists because it's not just design. And we're, we're moving into a world where AI and um, developers are creating platforms for creatives to really just never have to look at a line of code to develop some really cool things. White Lightning 2. Sorry, that was a little aside, but I kind of want to give some <laughs> some context there. Red Swirl. And I'm going to move some of this stuff out of, I'm going to move this shine out of the way. So I'm going to export this too. So this is going to be our, I'm going to maybe 2x this because I know I'm going to scale this. Um, in the design. We're actually going to make it expand so it takes over the entire screen. Um, so I'm going to just export, export that. Sean is saying, I'm working to become a UX designer. A lot of my work is for mobile experience, but I also love web. I got it. That's really cool, man. I'm excited. I really have to check out some of your uh, mobile experiences. What's going to be called? Let me see. Fine T says, I got a question. Maybe it's kind of strange, but could you be the UX creator without knowing UI at all? That is not a weird question at all, and you 100% can. So, to answer this quick question, come back to full screen because I think it, it, it warrants that type of attention. So, uh, Fine T was asking, I have a question. Maybe it's kind of strange, but could you be a UX designer or creator without knowing UI well? The answer is yes. When it comes to the UI UX industry, the reason why it's called UI UX is because they are separate things, but together they are two parts or two sides of the same coin. UI is graphical, aesthetic, psychology when it comes to aesthetics. UX is more behavioral, still psychology, but it's about getting people to go from one thing to the next and putting the blocks in place that allow people to uh, take the actions that a business wants a little bit easier, or even allow customers to take the steps that they need and or want to take a little bit easier. For example, um, UX, good UX in car insurance will be allowing somebody to, or allowing a customer to easily get car insurance with a few clicks of a button. And the UI, that's UX. The UI on top of the UX is making that experience of getting car insurance look good and obviously usable. But together, they're part of the same coin, but you can be just a behavioral uh, UX researcher who kind of does that side of things without having to do the aesthetic. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> and Sean says, do I have any thoughts on EditorX versus Webflow. I 100% do, and I've said this like a, a trillion times. 
Um, Webflow is very much. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to um, do this while I'm working too. Uh, I'm not the best at multitasking, but I do want to also <laughs> move through this stuff because I could talk all day. Um, you know, between Webflow, I've tried Webflow. Uh, Webflow is what came out first, um, and the thing is, is that you almost have to be a pseudo developer to use Webflow, and um, it just becomes a pain where it's just like, well, I'm trying to use this no code platform so that I don't need to know how to code, nor do I want to have to think like a developer. Um, but this tool is making me kind of need to, it is a, it's a good thing, right? You learn a lot of things by trying new things out, but I wanted a platform that allows me to be a designer to allow me to work the way I work best. That's why I like editor X versus Webflow because my brain has to change a little bit using Webflow versus how my brain has to work using editor X. So I hope that answers your question. Um, Simon says, but looking at uh, uh, lines of code is fun. I mean, for some people, that is not me. That is not me at all. So dark lightning one. I'm just going to call these dark light. Like me and spelling lightning is, is not working out today. All right, lightning two. And then I think I just hovered over something over here. Yes, I did. And this is white at. Okay, I'm gonna name this green at, and then let's see. I'm gonna call this green triangle too. But those are really good questions, guys. I mean, if you guys have any questions related to what should we call it, industry, whatnot, like this is also a good time to ask those questions. Like I, I'm really trying to change the format of how we are. How we've done these in the past right i think what we have done in the past is really good where it's just like a, a, a class almost essentially but i want to um i kind of want to change that a little bit i want this to be more so uh, a community time so it's not just like boom watch okay great and you know people never come back and they th the only value is uh the skill portion so So I'm going to call this wind two and I want to group these up here as well. All right. Those are already grouped top wind. I'll just name this bottom wind. All right. So I'm going to export all of these. These should be good to go. So I'm just holding shift and selecting all these pieces. Boom, 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 boom. And last piece here. All right. I'm going to hold control E. I'm going to export these PNGs as a 1x, export those there. And now we can move on to these pieces, which is our last bits. So I'm going to just export our Bulbasaur. Actually, it's named Bulb, so we're good to go there. We're going to do a 1x. We will go ahead and I'm just going to call this Bulb 2 just in case. I don't want it overriding anything. I'm gonna export the size of this Pokemon here. These we don't need to export because we already have these text assets obviously in Editor X and I'll show you guys how to bring in custom fonts as well. What I do though want is this button. And obviously we can make this button, you know what? We can make this button in Editor X, we don't, we don't need that. I'm going to export these out though. Bulb. So I don't know how to spell Bulbasaur, guys. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna boom. And then just do these in caps, Ivy. And then we're just gonna call this Soar. All right, I'm gonna select all those three, Control E, and I will export those puppies. I do need to give them a uh, specific names 001 because I do also have assets that are called these things okay control E export boom 
Sean says, you seem pretty cool. Are you open to doing portfolio reviews? Yeah, Sean, honestly, like, if I would totally be open to do portfolio reviews, and uh, this is also a great time to actually mention this, every Wednesday um, in our Discord, if you guys can check it out, link down in the description, but essentially every Wednesday we have what is called design and chat, and literally for just like, uh, basically all day Wednesday is booked for this but we start at uh, we start with a live stream at 1 p.m est just like we're doing now and we talk about things from design news career whatever we kind of just we do a 30 minute segment on the design news of what's really happening in in the world and then we jump into our discord and we just talk about things that our community wants to for example like if someone wants their portfolio looked at someone wants their website looked at someone wants to talk about uh editor x what they're struggling with we walk through that live together as a group um and it's not just through uh you know face it's not just through text what you guys are doing and um you know you guys are watching me we're actually in the discord together and we are watching we all have if you guys are comfortable with having your video cameras on everybody has voice chat on um and we're working through things live so if you guys want to do that like that is something that has been very beneficial to the people in our community and if you want to join again the links for our discord are down in the description this is something that happens every wednesday at 1 p.m est uh so again if you guys want to be in part of that that's something that we offer and that we do um but yes <laughs> and this says def give twitch vibes i'm glad it gives the twitch vibes all right it, but yeah I, I want this to be a little bit more relaxed um and people to get what they um what they'd like out of this and uh we're still learning to see you know what that is exactly because a lot of people have mentioned uh portfolio reviews and and things like that and we the only places we've really found the best placement during the week to do that is in our discord on Wednesdays but we're also you know that might move into our uh, a lot our live streams on Wednesdays as well we just have to figure out what the best format is and if you guys like them to be live so that your work also gets seen by people who watch our videos on YouTube we can do that as well we're working as a community <laughs> versus a, a, a dic dictatorship here so I'm gonna export this we're gonna call this close one for our button and then I also want to export just this piece. So export, yes. Okay. So I think we are pretty much done. Um, I do want to export this bit right here. So I'm going to export this as a PNG. Um, and I will just export it like that. All right. So I believe we are all done with our assets. And yeah, let's give it a try. Ooh. There's one more. So I do want to, I'm going to duplicate this because we're trying a couple of things. If you guys notice this Pokeball, which I, which I hand drew <laughs> versus this Pokeball is a little different. I couldn't really figure out what type of aesthetic I wanted to go for, but we're going to go ahead and give it a try. Um, so I am going to just duplicate this and I'm going to move this stuff here. And it looks like there's a couple other things like this. Maybe we'll call this red too, and we'll export that. Okay, but there is this bowl here that I'm going to group with this shadow. Let me just make sure it's one piece, yep. And let me go and export this. I'm going to call it Pokeball Bottom 2. And C Web 1988 says, looks cool. I'm glad, my friend. Now, really quick, I do need to pull this out of my ear very quickly. My earpiece was making me itch. Give me a second. I had to very quickly put it on before uh, the live stream went on, and then it was just like irritating all. irritating me. All right, so we have all the assets. Let's go ahead and start preparing some things in the Editor X. And by the way, just to give credit to the artists in which I have kind of gained some inspiration from, I got this sort of design from Green Pixel. I basically took their design and popped it into edit or Adobe Illustrator and got some of their vectors and recreated some of these pieces. We got some of the color inspiration from Jia Zhong Chong, 
or Jia Jun Chong. And we got some of our assets here from Pokemon.com. And also we got our 3D asset from Jayon Nam on Dri or excuse me, on Behance. So if you guys want to check out some of these things as well, let me know in the chat and I'll feel free to send these over in the chat so you guys can check them out. I've got their URLs, but I wanted to shout out the artist because you got to do that. All right, so all I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go to Editor Rex and jump into, I've already created a new, or not already created a new site, I've basically gone in, clicked my create a new site in my dashboard, and we are starting with a blank site today. And out of curiosity, everybody in the chat, today, or at least where I'm at, today is a holiday. What are you guys, where are you guys coming from? Uh, what are your guys' plans today? And how long have you guys been in the design industry and what brought you to this live stream? While you guys answer that question, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just going to delete both my footer and my header so that we have just our section to play with. What I like to do immediately is I like to go into my inspector it's basic, and, and why I like EditorX like in the beginning, where you know answering the question in the chat on whether or how I feel about EditorX versus Webflow. The two main things that I care about, even in Adobe XD or any design platform, is this right-hand side panel here, where I have my height, my width, uh, really anything that if I want to manipulate it, it's in this right-hand bar. Everything else that I really need to know, if I if I want some templates or I want to bring in media, that's in my left hand bar. Okay, so where I'm gonna upload my media is right here. There's a whole bunch of templates and basically puzzle pieces uh, for our, any type of website need in here, which I think is absolutely awesome. Basically, they provide the puzzle pieces for you and you just customize them based on your need. And uh, yeah, I just think it's super simple. I, I, I could say, this a million times but um you guys will see as we work through this so what i like to do is immediately set my section to 100 percent viewport height which means hey whatever viewport or whatever device you're on just take 100 percent of the width of that first or that initial size of that uh, device's viewport i'm going to remove the minimum height here i'm going to set this to none and i'm going to refresh so that this 100 percent vh actually takes effect Adrian says, nice one, Brandon. Glad to see you, Adrian. Simon says, no holiday in Norway, but on the positive side, I worked on my hover submission at work. So overall, it was pretty nice. Yo, that's awesome, man. I can't wait to see that. I didn't actually get to know the people who submitted their work. So I'm excited to see what uh, what that all looks like when it's all said and done. Kimberly says, hey, crew in Michigan watching my favorite. <laughs> Glad to have you here too, Kimberly. And I'm not a guru, I'm hanging out with you guys. But I'm glad you guys are having a awesome Monday. Sean says, I'm on the Amtrak home from VA. I've been learning design for about a year and a half. Hey man, Sean, you're not far then. Um, I am one state, I'm in Maryland, essentially. I, I need some water, guys. But I'm glad everybody's doing pretty good. It sounds like we have some projects in the work. We're hanging out, we're on the way home. It sounds like we're, we're gonna have a good day. And Gonzalo, glad to see you as well, my friend. It's been a really long time. It's good to see your, your digital face. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to start getting our colors in here. So our color, we have 011840. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna go and select my grid. I'm gonna go to my design piece here. I can change the color here, pretty simple. I'm gonna turn the opacity to 100. And I am going to actually change the theme colors. And what a theme color is, essentially, I'm going to paste that here, is based, you th kind of think about it as like your components are your style guide. If I put a color, for example, which I did, I put, I replaced the old color with this, it gives me now a gradient for the color that I put in here. So it's kind of being smart for me. And by the way, like, for example, if I ever decide to, you know, Let's say, here's the color, this is the blue that we're using. If I ever change the style guide colors, for example, 
we're using this blue here but if I go back in my style guide come in here and I just change the color right whatever I had used that theme color on across my site will actually dynamically change based on the new color as you guys can see here so I'm gonna just cancel that we're gonna keep it blue and we'll keep it moving so we're gonna go ahead and pull in our Pokemon or actually let's go ahead and pull in all of our menu or all of our media so I'm gonna go to media upload media upload from computer and we have all of these puppies to upload so I'm just gonna select hold shift we don't need those thumbnails and we are just going to select what we need I'm gonna rename some of these stuff at these pieces actually so rename Pokemon logo all right Pokemon bottom but -da. all right so we're looking pretty good all right I'll rename this one too. Pokemon logo two. All right, so we should be good to upload all these pieces. Boom, 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 boom. Just holding control. Ah, we don't need Charmander. We're gonna do Bulbasaur two here, and I think that is pretty much it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open those. I'm going to open one more thing, but I wanted to rename it. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna call this the po Polygon Background? I know it's not a Polygon, guys, but <laughs> Polygon BG. At least it gives it a name. All right, so waiting for all that stuff to upload. And of course, some of these things, like some of these shapes, I totally could have brought them in as SVGs. Some of you guys might decide to do that if, you know, because some of these things, especially like the, the symbols, like that, I totally could have uploaded those as uh, SVGs for a much clearer, much more crisper um, output. But for right now, we're going to do PNGs and we're going to see if anything happens. If it does, we'll just go back and use our, um, we'll just make them SVGs. All right. So first thing, let's go and I'm gonna pop in our Pokemon logo. There we go, we're gonna just center that, it's pretty easy. And we are gonna start building our Pokeball after we pull in this text. So I'm gonna right click, quick add title. I'm gonna copy this, choose your Pokemon. I'm gonna double click in here, paste. And we are going to, let's see, the font that we had here was Zoom. So we're gonna go ahead and find that. And by the way, to upload any, let me see. We actually might need to do it here because I don't see. I'm surprised because I quite often use Zoom and I don't see it in here. But we might just download it to, we might upload it again today so you guys can see the full process. But let me see how it's spelled, because I'm pretty sure I do have it in here. Z-U-U-Z-U-U-M-E. All right, <laughs> we're going to upload it. Okay, so let's see. We're going to go into my folders here for a quick second. And I guess this is pretty good to show on camera so you guys can see how this actually works. I'm going to go to my downloads. No zoom. Okay. Yellowtail, Product Sans. All right, let me go and try to find my Zoom font and I will get that uploaded into Editor X. All right, boom, let's go to Z, U, N, E. It would take a little hot minute to find. Sean is asking, do you have the assets in the description as well? Might be cool to follow along. Sean, actually what we can do is what I like to do with these projects. Actually, you know what? Maybe we can do this right now. So I can actually, and why, you know, why edit, another reason why Editor X is dope is I can go in here uh, and go to my, I'll do this after the fact, but I guess while we wait for this image stuff to, uh, basically or for me to find zoom on my computer what we can do is let me go ahead and 
go to my media because what I could do is I wonder if I select all of these and I should be able to that's adding to a board what I like to do is I've done this in the past but I have to it would take a little too much time now but what I do is I basically bundle everything in a style, uh, a site style. And basically I can take that link of that site style and put it on the video or really just put it in our Discord or whatever and you guys can actually play around with one, the finished site, but also the assets of the site. So that's definitely something we're gonna do. It'll take a little too much time to do it right now, but if you guys stick around and also join the Discord, that's something that we'll have for you guys. All right, so it looks like we have I found Zoom. Let me see. I might have to re-download it on the internet, guys. Give me a hot second. Because we need our thin and black. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. All right, boom. All right, here we go. I'm like, or I guess for right now, until that downloads, what I will use, let me see, do I have Babus up in here? We'll just use a placeholder for now. And we will drop this to, or pull this up to 50 pixels, maybe. And we are going to set this to white. Not the best, but we will leave this here for now. I'm surprised that I couldn't find zoom on my um, what's me call it on my computer. So let me just use this for now. I think I want to pull this up just a bit more. So we're going to drop the, or pull this up to 60. And I think it's just because the font is, is a little thicker than I would like. All right, let me do this. goes downloading let me extract this puppy all right there we go all right so to upload fonts this is basically how it works let me close this other things these other puppies out okay so I have all of the zoom here. All I want to grab, let's go back to our piece here. So we have zoom regular. So let's go ahead and find that in our folder. We've got light, medium, regular. Here we go. So I'm going to go to editor X, go to edit text, go to my font drop down, upload font. And I am going to just go to my downloads, my fonts, and we are going to grab zoom black black italic what else let's go ahead and grab regular and let's also grab extra light and let's go ahead and hit open and all these things automatically get uploaded gotta do a little dance see i was deciding whether today or not if i should sit or stand while doing this and I was like man if we're about to do a long project I was like I'm about to be like <laughs> if I sit down so I was like we'll, we'll, we'll stand and then if my legs start to die a little bit then we will have then we will decide uh, we can sit a little bit and while we wait 
What are some of the things that you guys either would really like to learn, whether it be web development, UI, UX, product design? Like, what are some of the things that you guys are super interested in at the moment um, that you would love to have some guidance in? Or what are some things that you guys are really excited about studying at the moment? Th that would be of huge interest to me. Kimberly is asking, when you download these fonts, Brandon, do they only download for that specific site you're building? Um, that is a great question. The answer is no. So once they're on your profile, they should stay there. Um, I guess I've just never used Zoom in a project like I thought I had because all of the other projects that I've used, like all these fonts typically stay here. Uh, yeah, I think I was confusing uh, Monument this font here. I was confusing Monument with uh, Zune. So, all right, let's go ahead and change this now. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to Zoom Cut Regular, not Poppins. Come on, Poppins, you, you're stealing the limelight. Come on now. All right, let me, why is that not working? All right, let me try this. All right, that works. All right, here we go, perfect. Okay, now I can scale this to the proper size I want. Let's go back here. The size of this is 100. Let's go ahead and pump this puppy up to 100. There we go, looks good. And now let's go ahead and start building our Pokeball. This is going to be a little, this is probably gonna be the most challenging because the Pokeball is complicated, right? You have the top, the bottom, and then you have the things inside. So what is important, especially when we start getting into tomorrow and a little bit later today, is how to keep the Pokeball in a container um, and basically seem as if it's closed the entire time. So I think how I wanna do this, um, and this is kind of the only type of puzzle piecing sort of thing or way that you have to think when you're in Editor X, because responsive is involved, but you have to think, how can I keep my things in the position that I want. So what I would like to do here is I am going to pull in, not a shape, I clicked too fast, I wanna pull in a container. And I don't have to pull a container in right away, I literally can pull it in after the fact uh, as I'm building my Pokeball, but I'm going to set basically limits as to where I want my Pokeball. So I'm gonna set the transparency of this container to about eh, 20 so I know it's there and I might actually move our choose your Pokemon a little bit higher up so we can move our Pokeball further here as well. I'm gonna make it a, a box. So I'm gonna make it pixels for right now. I'm gonna set this to 60 or 600 by 600. Minimum height, we're gonna set this to none. Again, our height, 600 PX. There we go. Drag this down just a little bit. Pull this up and I'm using my arrow keys I'm gonna scale this down just a little bit, center it. But again, this is also a reason why I like Editor Rex versus Webflow. Like, I don't think you can move stuff around like this in, in Webflow. Like, you have to do it very much as if things were boxy or boxes on top of boxes. And I see uh, some pretty good questions in the chat below. So we have Shweta is asking, how do you get started with UX design in the first place. So really quick, I think this is a really good question. How do you get started as a UX designer? For those who do know me, even for those who don't, I did not go to, uh, I did not go to college for design. I learned everything and anything from YouTube and I have worked with Adobe. I work with uh, Wix and Editor X. I have worked with LG, Disney, Danon, Hilton, Salesforce, a lot of people. And the thing is, in, in what we, the industry cares about, what the market cares about is what you produce, wh how do you solve problems? And so what UX is, is solving customer problems and business problems and w distinguishing how you can find a middle ground for them. The customer's problem is they want something, they have a problem, they're trying to go from having the problem to not having the problem or at least going from having a problem to having a solution. And UX design is really, how can you through product design or creating some sort of solution, help a person and or customer and or business 
go from having a problem to not having a problem through technology, websites, mobile apps, uh, AR, VR, whatever. So a very general way of how you get started in UX design is find problems you enjoy solving or find technology that you enjoy either consuming or you enjoy actually just being a part of. So for example, for me, my I went from being a UI UX designer to loving to solve student and or education challenges. So I ended up moving into working with Adobe and edrx and Wix and helping people who are trying to get into the space, get into the space a little bit easier. So that is the problem I help solve as an example. So if you want to help, if you want to work for Netflix, right? You have to ask yourself, what are the challenges or the problems that both the business and the customer have? Why does Netflix exist? People want to enjoy easy, accessible content at their fingertips and a, a wide variety of content. And your job as somebody at Netflix is how do you help them consume better, easier, uh, and find things that actually interest them without <laughs> going through and looking for two hours and never even watching anything. So the best way is to try to, for example, if you think you can do a better version of something, try to make your own. Like just keep the mind of an inventor, if that makes sense. Because the people who made the light bulbs, the people who made math, the people who made anything, they saw a problem, they were like, I think I can do better, and they made their own version. That's literally what I did to get into the industry. I saw something, thought I could make a better version of it, made my own version, that was something that I put in my portfolio. I explained why I thought my, uh, in the reasoning for why I thought my version was better than where it came from, and that literally is a form of UX. So all this stuff that they're teaching in school where they elaborate things, yes, psychology, there's a lot of things in it, um, you know, that goes into anything. There's psychology, there's engineering, there's aesthetic, there's a design, there's usability. Like those are all pieces of a puzzle, but there is no one place other than YouTube where you can literally learn all that stuff because you can be a UI UX designer or a product designer. You can work, um, you can go to Netflix and have a certain type of challenges that that company works with. And then you can go to Microsoft and you're still a UI UX designer, product, whatever but they have different problems that they work with on or they work on and you might have the same skill sets but there's two different problems that you have to learn how to solve. So there's a base skill set which is probably how to design things if you want to be in the UI perspective or side of things, aesthetics, uh, design psychology, things like that. There's UX that which is behavior and you study how people use particular products and how you can make it better. And um, you know, so honestly there is no one way of entry point, but I would highly just recommend pay attention to what you like, pay attention to what you use. Are there applications, are there experiences that you use on a daily basis that you think can be made better? And you thinking about how you can make it better is literally the job of a UX designer. That's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We're at work, or we're doing, we're working on a project, and we're like, oh, I think this can be better. How can it be better from an engineering standpoint, from a design standpoint, from a behavioral standpoint, um, and getting people to get to where they want to go a little bit faster and quicker and with better understanding. So um, that from a skill side of things is how you begin. Being curious, figuring out where you can um, better things, and just studying people who you want to become. So if you want to work at Netflix, you know, who is working there? Is there a way that you can reach out to them on LinkedIn about, you know, how cool their work is and that you're interested on in working at Netflix and you're just curious about hearing how they like it and, you know, maybe just make a, a relationship at Netflix. And one, you get to see if the culture at that company is cool, you get to meet somebody at the company. And plus that's part of networking. So constantly think about what you're interested in, seeing how you can make things better network with people in the areas in which you are interested and in seeing if you can reach out to them just to see if they like what they're doing and if the thing that you think you actually would enjoy is actually appeasing to you through uh, talking to other people in the position you wanna be in. So I know that was really long-winded, but it was a really good question. And uh, yes, and so 
I think a lot of you guys have also uh, asked a lot of good questions in the in the chat here, or answered too. Kimberly, I see you stepped in, and um, Sean as well. Sean says, product design and creating innovative solutions to common problems, UX stuff, basically. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. Sean, that's a really good answer. So UX stuff, we'll try to cover some of that stuff. Kimberly says, by the way, Brandon, when you are going to get the... When are we going to get the beta so that we can set grid parameters directly in our containers like I see you have now? Um, that's a great question. Um, I'll have to take a look at that because I'm actually not entirely sure what you mentioned. I know they did release something, um, but I'll have to check. So testimony in the chat says, started learning UI design about a month ago. Hey, well, that's awesome, man. You're in the right place to continue growing. And if you have any questions, um, I hope I know I went on a long like soapbox about, uh, <laughs> you know, the UI UX, it, but I hope some of that is of value to you. Sean says, why measure assets by pixels as opposed to vertical width versus vertical height? Sean, that's a great question. So to move back, why I like to do vertical height versus vertical width is because it's basically it's about how much math and specificity you actually want to do. If you set, for example, if I set 600 pixels versus like a vertical width, vertical height, whatever, I just know I usually start off with pixels because it gives me a little bit of container. And then once I'm like, okay, this works, then I tend to go and move into percentages or something that's a little bit more responsive, a uh, more responsive me measurement. But for right now, for the section, I use 100% viewport height just as like a standard thing that I like to, to work with. But I, I usually start with percentages when it comes to sections and or um, if I know I want something to be a very specific size, like, for example, this Pokemon thing here. I know I want this to be this size. I'll probably set this to pixels. And then when we start messing with uh, some of the breakpoints here, I will set uh, I will set this back to percentages. It, it's a very weird workflow. There is no right or wrong. It's just the way that I work. And I tend to, once I get everything on the page and I start pushing and pulling these things here to see how things respond, right? Then I will decide how I want things to be, whether they're pixels, percentages, or viewport width, viewport height. Let's see. And Sean also says, the best way in my experience is to begin with networking. Look into the process of any case study you can find through their portfolio, you can learn a lot there. That, that's great insight, Sean. Um, and Shweta, I'm glad that some of the advice was helpful. And testimony says, can you please give some advice on getting better in UI design? And all right, and I'll try to answer that while I work through here. So the best way to work on your UI design is honestly practice. And I know that's so generic, but honestly, for example, like to me, doing this project right it forces me i see really cool things online i see this right and i'm like huh that would be really interesting first off i wonder if i can make this myself two i wonder if i can actually turn it into a website where we hover um you know something happens the light glows when i click it it actually pops open and then the screen shifts to actually introduce me to my first pokemon so it's kind of just like trying things to push yourself. I've never done this, and I'm doing this live with you guys, giving you guys some uh, UI UX advice, but also pushing myself in ways that I've never really tried before, and I feel confident enough that with my skills that I can do that, teach you guys how to do that while doing it live, and uh, so on and so forth. But it's, it's constantly, it's pushing yourself to try things that inspire you. Like just in my, you know, in my monologue, right? I was saying like, you know, try to find people that inspire you and, and see what you can, um, what you can build from just attempting to recreate what sparks joy in your eyes or what you think is really cool. So uh, that's my answer. It's just practice finding cool things that, um, you enjoy and seeing if you can just recreate the cool thing because if you can recreate it that means next time you don't need something to help you recreate it you can just do it yourself so that's my take on it. I would love to hear what some of you guys think also in the chat 
um, you know, in terms of uh, what's it call it? What your process is or what's comfortable for you all. Okay. So, and also I would love to hear your thoughts, uh, testimony on what you think of that. If that's, <laughs> if that's not the answer you are looking for, or, you know, something that you have been doing that is comfortable for you. So yeah, just feel free to share with us. All right. So we have our Pokeball. I am going to condense these together. Um, I do though want to also, um, I want to create, I kind of want to finish, I want to create the finished look first because I think that might be, um, probably the hardest portion. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in some of our other assets. I'm going to pull in our dark light. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Dark green triangles here. Actually, first, before I do that, let me go ahead and pull in my uh, social media stuff. There we go. I'm gonna add to page. Add these puppies. We got Twitter. Oh, I should have done these as SVGs. Okay, and I'm actually going to extend the size of our. I'll make this a little bit bigger. So let me refresh this. Kimberly's asking, did you create these assets directly in XD or in Illustrator and import them into XD? Great question, Kimberly. So just like we did last week, um, I created, for example, um, these uh, Pokeball pieces. These are actually vectors. I pulled in an asset into Illustrator, basically got the vector pieces, brought them from Illustrator into XD, and uh, then exported them as you guys see here. But also, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, you know, oh, you know, Figma over everything. Honestly, guys, I really like, um, I really like Adobe XD and just, I swear by the Creative Cloud just because of how powerful not just XD is, but how the entire suite works together and just makes my life easier. Um, yeah, <laughs> because I can go from Illustrator, I can create my assets, I can bring my assets into, um, you know, something else. It's, it's just, it's seamless. So I kind of want to give you guys my pre preferences there too. All right, so what I'm doing now is I am trying to basically uh, rearrange some things here. And again, uh, like I, just like a design tool, right? I can just grab and, you know, move things accordingly. So I'm going to move our little social media asset pieces he down here. I'm going to do Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm going to select all three holding shift and I'm going to align them correctly so that there's equivalent space between all of them. I'm going to place in a container just like this. And I am going to make sure that there's no minimum height. Set that to none. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to remove this 80 or not that 80. There's some space in here and let's find what that space is. So height, it has 147 pixels, but I wonder why. Let's switch this. Oh, we got auto. Ah, here it is. There is some uh, margin underneath these buttons. So I'm just gonna remove them. Boom, boom, there we go. Okay. We have got our container. We're gonna center align it. It should be good there. Let's scale this puppy back up. I'll move this container a little bit closer to the bottom here. Center align this container. Make it a little bit wider. Center. Okay. Looking at the comments here really quick. Says Sean says the downside of UX in my experience is that we rarely create for the sake of making something cool. We design with a problem in mind. So when I see cool stuff, fun stuff, I don't see the potential. I hear that Sean, but like, that's why I say take an inventor's mind because it, to these things, because, and I think it's very difficult. I'm going to change screens here, you know, just to reread and reiterate on, um, what you had here. Sean says the downside of UX in my experience is that we rarely create from the sake of making some for the sake of making something cool. We design with a problem in mind so that when we see cool stuff or when I see cool stuff or fun stuff, I don't see the potential. I think the thing is and why I say take an inventor's mind to these things is because I feel like we're so indoctrinated with 
go to school, go to a job, and they will find the tasks in which to, and the problems for you to solve. But a child's mind, right? And I am only, that's my definition of it. Children find cool and interesting ways to allow them to do something a little bit better. They create some awkward innovation to, even for example, they're bored. So they say the floor is lava, the floor is water, and therefore now we have to create a game to entertain ourselves. So what in our lives that is outside of work, more so artistic, something that's a little bit more back into our child mind, or child self, that will allow us to create creative solutions to everyday, everyday things that we actually enjoy. Like for example, we could simply just say something like, do you like the shoes that you wear? Yes. Do you think your shoes could be cooler? I'm sure. How do you think you can make your sh shoes cooler? Can you come up with a cooler way for you to wear your shoes or m customize your shoes, so on and so forth? That's kind of the way that I go about things. For example, like this design here. I didn't really see a function for it. I just thought that, hey, one, this is going to teach people. Two, this is going to be super cool if I can pull this off. Three, I'll learn something from being able to do this because when I actually have to solve a different type of problem, I can use this sort of, uh, you know, this skill set that I've learned out of just having fun and educating people how to do it in different problems. So there's solving problems for pro solving problems and capitalism sort of sake, or just trying things out for yourself, skills, more so in artistic exploration and just skill building. So it's kind of just how, uh, I might be wrong on this, but a lot of the artists of you know history, they not only studied art, but they studied physics, they studied biology, they studied a whole bunch of things. Um, and that all, all of that knowledge, surrounding knowledge, not in just one direction, helped them, <laughs> physics, uh, uh, biology, you know, um, physiology, that all helped them become better artists. And I'm sure their art helped them become better inventors and engineers and uh, what's we call it? All right, but let me see. I saw something about Simon. Simon says, have the problem be the fact that there isn't enough cool stuff in the world. <laughs> yes, let's have that be the problem. Testimony says, I have started the recreation process. I was thinking if there was any other tips. My friend, really, that is it. Just get your hands dirty, start practicing things, and start trying to build your portfolio around cool things, projects, and or problems that you want to be solving in your professional life, if that makes sense. All those things that you want to be doing in your professional life, make your own versions, make your own projects, and have those in your portfolio so that when you are interviewing with people, um, who are looking for people who solve the problems that you're probably looking to solve anyway at these companies that you're interviewing at. They'll be like, oh, this person is looking and or has experience in solving the problems that we have at this company. Let's pull them on board. And the best way to see and understand what problems a company you're interviewing at try to solve is look at the portfolios of the people who are in the seats that you wanna be in. Use LinkedIn, look at their portfolios. What, they, what have they built? Um, what's in their portfolios that's a huge indicator for what you should be building as well all right <laughs> okay so let's work on this pokeball so we've got the top and the bottom they are both centered in our container here now i'm going to start pulling in our other bits here let's go to the media show more and we're going to pull in our we have our white lightning we have our our wind, our swirls. I'm going to just use this swirl. And what else? We've got our green squirrel. we got our bottom. We're going to use a dark light, our triangle piece. And I think that should be it. All right. Let's go ahead and add that to page. It's going to pop them all right here. I'm going to go to my layers panel here, and I'm going to select all of this stuff, holding shift. And I am going to place in a container so I can very easily move it. Oops. So it put everything in a container. But I'm going to place all these other pieces in here as well. So I'm going to select all these. I'm going to drag them into our container. Or Control X. Select our container. Control V. There we go. So now all those assets should be in our container just like this. 
All right, I'm gonna remove the minimum height here because I want all of the assets to basically make the container expand. So just a, a quick thing. Like I said, I don't like having to deal with math and this is again, um, you know, something that I enjoy about Editor X. I can basically have my items inside of a container, set my container to a height of auto, which basically says, hey, Editor X, just take a look at what is inside of this container and expand the height based on what is within the container. So for example, if I move an asset down, oh, not, not that, not out of the container, but if I move this down inside of the container, or maybe I scale it up, for example. I'm gonna set this to pixels rather than a percentage. Our container, if you guys just saw that, our container expanded in height because I actually changed the uh, the size of an element inside of the container. So it just makes things pretty fluid. Okay. So what I am going to do here is, I am going to turn the container to zero opacity and I'm going to move this container that we have right over here. I'm going to center it and I am just going to do one thing at a time. So I'm going to go through, we have our green piece or our wind piece right here. And I'm going to put this on the other side of my screen so I can actually look at all the placements of everything. So I'm gonna place this right here. And I am actually going to, for now, I'm gonna control Z this, because one of the things that we have to do is I am gonna to try to manipulate this container that we have, right? But I do not want it to go inside of this container yet. So I'm gonna hide our Pokeball, don't display. I'm gonna take this container, bring it back to the center, make sure it's centered both horizontally and vertically, and I am going to, let's see, what do I wanna start off with? We'll start off with this little piece here. So I'll bring this here. Top piece is be up here. And sometimes what's smarter also is to um, maybe put everything in a container last. Let's see, so we don't need this. This is not a PNG, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And like I said, as you guys can see, some of these were, they were meant to be super tiny, so that's why they're pixelated. But honestly, what you could do, for example, I can see some pixelation in this. What I would do is just export these as SVGs. All right, so we have this piece, we've got our lightning bolt, we've got this got a dark lightning bolt here I'm actually just going to wonder if I can I'm gonna pull this I'm just gonna pull everything out of this section or out of this container here I'm gonna delete the container for now because I'm gonna put everything into place and then once I am happy with the placement then I'll put everything back in our container. So I'm gonna place this, let's see, right around here. We'll our lightning bolt will be right here. This piece right over here. Green, this will stay around here. Our white piece, this will be a little bit bigger, right around there. This white piece will be over here. I'll make this maybe a little bit smaller. Same with this. Okay, so let's bring back our, not this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. There we go. I'm gonna bring back our Pokeball here. Now we have a little bit more context. Boom, boom. And what I want to do as well, is I'm going to put all of this Pokeball, or all of this content behind, I think at least, 
behind the Pokeball. So I want to move, take our Pokeball, I want to pull them up top in terms of layers. So they are above everything. And I'm going to select these pieces here. And I'm going to see if I can just attach them to our container here. There we go. We are now, all of our elements are inside of our, we're going to call this Pokeball container. All right. So now I'm going to, I'm going to place these properly. I feel like our Pokeball is like a little bit off center here. I'm going to rotate our image. Let's see. Bum, bum. Adjust. Maybe 45, maybe 50 degrees, maybe 60, 80. All right, we'll do 80. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to move this thing. We'll leave this here. All right. So I'm going to close our Pokeball here. I think I'm going to pull our bottom up here. Somewhere around there. Okay. I'm going to place these in another container. Call this ball. All right. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to place all of these things inside of, I'm gonna essentially make a hover interaction, but I'm gonna reverse it here, or a click. So, and I've not done this yet, so we're gonna, we're gonna be learning together. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do, or I think I'm going to do, is I'm going to select our ball here. We're gonna kind of use this as our trigger. So I'm gonna to go to my lightning interactions over here, I'm gonna add a trigger. And I'm going to type, I'm going to select click here. I know some people in Edirex do not have this interaction yet. However, you do have hover and we will be going over how you can do what we're going to do today, just using the hover interaction. So have no fear. So we're going to do ball. We're going to do, we're going to set the affected elements to be essentially all of these pieces in here. So I'm going to actually select all of these now holding shift. We essentially want to separate the ball from all of the ball elements. So we're going to place this in a container. We're going to call this ball elements. I'm going to make sure I select all this stuff. And I'm going to just move it and see if it actually goes inside of it does not. So I'm going to control X, go into our ball elements, control V. All right, it places our stuff and I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move this stuff semi back in the right place. And I'm just going to move this stuff back where I wanted it. Now, what is this? Okay, we have that. For some reason here, let me, this is the ball element. Let me go to our layout here. Minimum height, we're gonna set that to none. Width, we are going to set this to max con, yeah. Let's set this to 100 for now. All right, we got some funky stuff going on, but this is part of the process, guys. Let me just control Z. All right. We have our ball. We have our Pokeball container. All right, maybe we'll just leave our stuff in here. I think that should be fine. All right, let's think. Actually, I think that might work. All right, we'll try it out. So again, we're gonna go to our ball. We'll use this as a trigger. Interaction, add trigger, click. Self, rather than having the affected element be ball, we're going to choose to have the Pokeball container be the thing that is actually affected and everything that's inside of it. So the effect that we want to do is we're going to make a custom effect. And we are going to have, 
You know what? This is the hardest thing about doing this live. Because I got to think about it. I'm like, I think the first thing that we need to do, even though all this stuff is out here now, I think that's fine. But I think I want to hide it all for right now. Because we want to do the first basic thing, which is the hover interaction, where the ball just swivels and has a hover. So I'm just going through all these things that we've put out that will be part of the main piece. But for now, I just want to have, we have our ball here, and we're just going to on hover, rotate it and make it glow, which is super easy. So to do that, I'm just gonna go to my media again. I'm gonna grab my red glow here, my red shine, add to page. Okay, I'm gonna pull it right on top of our Pokeball here. I'm gonna go to layers, I'm gonna call it shine. We've got bottom here, and we have top here. Okay, now, I'm removing some of the height things for our ball container. Our bottom thing, I'm gonna just move this up using my arrow keys, just like that. Okay. This is shine. Now, I, what I do want to do, so I can reduce the opacity of this to zero for now. And all we're gonna do is we're going back to ball, we're gonna go to beta, we're gonna add a trigger, we're gonna do hover this time, and the affected element will be ball because everything we want in this container, this ball container to actually do something. We're gonna apply an effect and we are gonna do a custom and we're going to do, we're gonna call this ball move and shine. It might be two different things, but we'll start seeing what works. All right, so now we have our timing. What I'm gonna do and go ahead and do here first is I am going to take this entire ball container and I'm going to rotate it. So we have all of our pieces here. I'm going to rotate it about negative 30 degrees, negative 25, or maybe negative 20. Let's see. Yeah, just a little rotation. Maybe we want it to scale a little bit. Maybe we'll do 110% on both the X and Y axis. Maybe we get a little growth. And then from there, the shine, we're going to take from image 0% opacity to about 10. So we'll go ahead and hit done. Let's go ahead and preview. So we have this part done. Now, do I like that shine? Not really. The only reason that our, uh, what's gonna call it? This shine looks so much better is because it's using a hard light. Now, do I know how to use hard light exactly in, uh, <laughs> in Editor X? No, I do not. But we'll figure it out as we continue going. So we have our hover interaction, which is pretty easy. Now what we want to do is we want to have the click animation and that's when everything kind of pops out, right? So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So I am going to set all these other pieces that we had hidden. We're going to now display them. Okay. I'm going to take this, use my arrow keys to kind of move it in position. All right, now what we wanna do is create our click. So I'm gonna go back to our ball. We have our click trigger that we've created already. I want to add a interaction. Again, I want the ball container to be what is affected. We're gonna apply an effect and we are going to make a custom. We're gonna do Pokeball, we're gonna call this Pokeball Open. So on click, we want the top. Oh, you know what? This will actually, we're going to do something different. We're going to go back to, we're going to delete this. New interaction. Instead of the ball here, we're going to select this entire Pokeball container. So we are able to manipulate not only the Pokeball, but the assets as well. So we're going to select Pokeball container, hit done. Perfect, select a custom effect. We're gonna call this Pokeball Open. 
now I have access to all these things that I can animate, which is perfect. So I'm going to select the uh, bottom here. I'm just going to open. Let's see. Dun, dun. I'm going to translate this. Maybe at negative 100 pixels. Let's just do 100. To open it up, maybe do 150. And then, let's see. So I want to also, so this is the initial state. What I want to have happen. So remember, we started off, if we go back to this, I started designing in Editor X basically this format, right? But what we need to do is we need to create the initial state, which is this. So right now I've, I'm designing the initial state. This is the Pokeball open. Pokeball open pretty much is already how I want it to be. So I don't want to edit that. But the initial state, all these assets, like these, uh, what's it call it? These symbols, etc. I want to, I just moved something and I didn't mean to. Let me set this back to zero, zero, okay. I want to move all these bits here to the center and also scale it down. So when we actually click, everything kind of pops up. So I'm gonna set this to, let's try, let's move this into 50. I can also move this with my, what's gonna call it? With my mouse, but some of this content is actually some of these layers, I do want to just like not display for right now because they're in the way of what's underneath. So I'm just going to have to use the math. 70, move this in by 100, maybe 200. There we go. We'll do 150. Okay. And we'll take the scale to 0%. We're going to do the same thing for pretty much all the other assets here. I'm going to do this lightning. We're going to set the scale to zero, zero. This piece here, we're going to set this to scale zero, zero. Lightning, we are going to set this to zero. Well, before we set that to zero, set this to 100. I want to move this a little bit more towards the center. So I'm going to translate this about 50 pixels. 50 pixels, there we go. And now we'll set the scale to 0%, 0%. We're gonna take this black lightning, we're gonna bring this more to the, to, to the center. Again, I could drag this, but as you guys can see, like there's this image over top, which is the shine, that is over top these elements. So if I were to do this again and be smart about it, I would actually put this ball asset underneath all of, uh, uh, all of the content just for the animation purpose. So I could actually manipulate these things without having to do uh, this, sort of this math here. So translate this, we're gonna do negative 50. Again, I'm just trying to pull everything sort of to the center so that everything kind of explodes when we click. Negative 90, and I'll do a negative 50. No, that's up. We'll do 80. And we'll set the scale to 0%, 0%. Same thing with this. We are going to bring these in. Maybe just... I'm going to undo that. I'm going to set the scale to 100. 100. So that is back to its original state. I'm going to bring this in maybe by 50. Down by 25 pixels, just like that. And maybe we'll do a scale of 50%, 50%. So it's not a huge scale up, but it's at least something. And we'll do the same here. So we'll do 50 pixels, negative 50 pixels. And we'll do negative 50. And we will do 50% scale, 50% scale. And we'll turn the opacity to zero. Same thing here, opacity to zero, perfect. Simon says, nice to learn from you learning stuff real time. Yeah, man, like 
Same thing here. It, like I, I'm trying to figure out what is best for just the community in general. Like I think a lot of people do like you know the 30 minute segments. Some people really do like the uh, you know hour, hour and a half. And you know I really want to. You know, we're going to be making live, we're going to be making content that is cut from these live streams anyway. So I, you know, I really wanted to try, hey, let's go ahead and try like this two hour thing. See what it works, if it works out, if people like it. And so far it seems like, you know, 23 of you guys are, are hanging out and uh, enjoying this. So, you know, maybe this is something in the background that you guys listen to during the day. And uh, we would really love feedback on that because it helps us better understand how to provide you all with what you're looking for. Now, why I say that, let me go ahead and drink some water real quick. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit done. I want to see kind of what's, oh, wait, hold up. We missed two things. So let's go back into this. Let's go to Pokeball container. Let's go to effects. And I'm going to edit the Pokemon ball open. So I want to make sure um, the initial state. Okay, perfect. Pokeball open. All right done now I am really interested in seeing like what happened oh yeah what happened <laughs> I'm like there were things here but where is it now let's kind of see what's going on here all right so we got this we've got the click okay so now it's time to uh, like like I said, this stuff is a work in progress. So we got that, we got the ball. And now what we want to do is, is to clean stuff up. This is the process, this is the ugliness in which how designing and creating things really looks, guys. All right, let's go to... There was something I wanted to check. So Pokeball container, let's go to the effects of this. <clears throat> All right, I want to check. All right, so this is the animation. That black one really does not move at all, so let's actually make that happen. So we're gonna translate this a little bit. I'm gonna pull this down by like, 25, maybe 50, no, negative 25. <clears throat> and we're gonna pull this down by maybe 50, there we go. And we're gonna scale this down to zero, zero. Capacity also zero. Oh, I did it on the initial state, Never mind. <laughs> or I did it on the, the wrong one. Let me control Z that, let's go back to the Pokeball open. It's very important to remember what thing you're actually editing. So I'm gonna have to undo all of that. So scale 100. I'm gonna move all these things back to zero. Okay, make sure I'm on the initial state. I'm gonna set the opacity to zero. Scale is zero, zero. And we're gonna translate this to negative 25 and we're gonna do 50. Let's hit done let's go ahead and play all right so we do have a little bit of a pop all right that pops out that pops out these two I think need work yeah so let's go ahead and fix that so we're gonna translate these 25 let's do 50 maybe 60 why let's do yeah and we're gonna set the scale to zero percent zero percent opacity zero percent and i just did this thing i said not to do where i'm designing on the hover state not the initial state so once more let me undo all of this scale to 100 scale okay Make sure I'm on the initial state. Uh-oh. There we go. And go into this piece. We're going to go to scale is zero, but we're going to translate this to 60 and 50. And I do want to see, uh-oh, did I hit the escape button? Got the fat fingers, guys. All right, let's try this again. Initial state, boom. 
We've got this. We're going to set this stuff to 100% scale. Kimberly says, I agree. Learning the whole process really helps. I'm glad. You know, we'll, we'll see how much you guys actually like it. Um, <laughs> as we uh, continue today and tomorrow. But let's see. So we got the initial state that has moved. Boom, scale. I'm going to set this to zero. All right. All right, so that's moving. Let's now work on the Black Thunder here. Let's set the scale to 100 and 100 so we have something to look at. We're going to do a negative 40. And maybe we'll do a 25. Maybe negative 35. Negative 20. That looks good. Okay. Set the scale back to 100 or uh, zero for the initial state. Go to Pokeball Open. Let's see what this looks like. All right, that's looking pretty good. We do have a little bit of a red lightning bolt up here that's getting lost. So I do want to, I'm gonna translate this to about, let's do negative 10. Negative 25. And if anybody who is like, Brandon, how do you know if it's like negative 25 or negative 50? Honestly, guys, I'm literally just putting numbers in and seeing what it looks like. So please do not be like, oh, he knows the maths. I don't. I'm seeing what it looks like. All right, and the last bit here. Oops. I'm going to grab this and I'm gonna translate this to about, let's say, 60. 60. Because I want this piece to be like down here. I'm gonna pull this in maybe by like 40 pixels, maybe 30, 20, just testing things. So let's go ahead and play this. All right, that's looking a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and preview this. Let's see what's going on. So we have our little glow, let's press, boom. All right, so we've got a little something. Now, the thing is, is that my, my question is how do we, because I want that ball to essentially stay here or maybe on click it basically glows pops and then goes to the white screen so let's try to figure this out we have two interactions and I'm thinking here maybe it's just better if we have um, if we have one so let's let's do a, a little think about this let me see So we have that hover, which is cool. But maybe what we do is just the hover is the light. Um, so it's not the rotation, it's just the, the uh, that shine that comes through. So I'm gonna hit done, I'm gonna go to my, our ball here. And I'm gonna go to ball open. So let's play, let's see what goes on. I think it's this one here. There we go. So we have this now. What I'm gonna remove some stuff from this. So this ball here, I'm gonna remove the rotation here. I'm going to hit uh, done and let's go back to preview. So we have this thing here. I think what I might want to do, maybe we take out the, uh, you know, the grow piece. What do you guys think in the chat? How, what are you guys thinking so far? And while you guys answer that, I'm actually going to elongate um, our web page here just a little bit. I'm going to move this from 100% VH. I'm going to move this to pixels. And I'm just going to drop or pop this open to 1000 here. Or maybe I'll just scale this down. And then control Z, control Z. I'm going to scale these puppies down. We don't, they don't need that much room. Recenter those. Go back to preview. I'm 
gonna rise raise these up just a little bit preview all right so maybe now what we can do is go back to my layers pokeball container on click so we're going back here pokeball open let's go in here let's see what's going on so maybe what I do from here is the rotation. So I'm going to rotate by 20 degrees, negative 20. Let's go to preview. All right, boom. There we go. Now, what I want to have happen, I wonder if we can go to, let's click our Pokeball here. Let's go to triggers. Let's go to ball. Let's go to our triggers. We have a click trigger. Here we go. So the click, what I want to do is toggle on and off an effect. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's hit done. Let's go to preview. So click, click. All right, so now we have the open and close of the Pokeball. So this is working out. All right. I'm still really not liking the, what's going to call it? The, uh the red that's happening here it just it looks very ugly <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll take it for now all right we've got this now i want to add a little bit of let's go back to the edit site we have like part one ish done now let's go ahead and add some of our shine our white shine in let's go to my media let's go and find this must be the white shine there we go so let's go ahead and make sure we're selecting the correct layer. So this is called white shine. I was about to call it white S-I-S-H-I-T. Um, all right, so we're gonna pull this. Where should we pull this? We're gonna pull this into, hmm. I wanna pull this into our ball container. So I'm going to control X, select our ball container, paste, just like this. And let's see. This ball piece here, I want to set this. If you guys noticed the height of that container was adjusting when I brought in the white shine. That's because it's set to auto. This is also why I like to sometimes set things to pixels because I've already made certain decisions to keep things certain size and I'm bringing in new things and I don't want things to fluctuate. Kimberly's asking, can you put the shine behind the ball? I can put the shine behind the ball, but I want to see, like I, I could totally just move it behind the layers here. Um, I wonder if that is the proper spot to put it though. We'll see. So we're going to go back to our, and this is all part of the testing, right? So we're going to go back to our ball here, our trigger, and let's see, toggle, our click is to open the Pokeball. Let's go into that. Let's go into our effects, Pokeball open, because this is the effect we want to edit. So this is the initial state. This is that. Okay. Let's click done really quick because... I'm trying to find, here we go. This is the correct Pokeball open where it rotates. So here I'm gonna set, I'm gonna go to the initial state here. I'm gonna select white shine. I'm gonna set that to zero. And we're also gonna set the scale to zero as well. On the hover state, we're actually gonna set the white shine to be 100% opacity, 100% scale. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's go ahead and hit done. Let's go and preview and see what this looks like. Sorry, right, so we have the shine there, but we need to actually move it in a particular area. So that's behind here. We want it to actually be within this part of the Pokeball. So let's go ahead and get that squared away. So we're gonna go back to our Pokeball container, effects, Pokeball open, and we're gonna find our shine piece here. 
and we are going to translate this. We're going to bring it down by, let's try just negative 50 for right now. And I can very barely see it. I wish the background was like a different background. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I can actually see it a little bit. Let's do 50, 25, let's mess with this Y, 80, let's do 120, let's pull it down just a little bit more, 130, 150, and again like I said guys if you actually paid attention to how you did your layers, you would not be having to mess with these numbers. This is just a Brandon Gross special in which he did not organize his layers in the beginning. <laughs> All right, so let's go press done. Let's preview. Oh, not published yet. Oh, forgot to turn off the background. So let's go to back to our effects. Let's take the background off of the white shine here. Let's set this to zero. Preview. There we go. So we got a little our shine in there. Now one of the things that I want to do is I wonder if I can, because I don't like this red shine while still while this is still hovered. We got to figure out a way to do that. But for right now, I guess what we'll do I'm trying to think how we can do that. My only thought here is maybe when the actual click trigger happens, right? We are also removing some sort of effect. So I want to choose the shine, remove an effect, and that effect be a custom one. Or no, let me see. How about we just apply an effect? We'll do custom. We're going to call this turn off shine. The red shine specifically. I wonder I wonder if I can do the what the red behind the ball would look like. I'll have to try that. Simon says it might not like it, but you can try to set the opacity of it to zero when clicked. That's exactly what I'm kind of trying to do here. So let's see. Start designing. All right. So we have this, we're going to set the opacity of this to zero and let's hit done. Let's preview. Let's see what's going on. So we click, nah, I think I did it wrong. So let's go ahead and try something else. But first off, let me go ahead and try to do, let me go into this ball piece or I'm going to take this shine. I'm going to try to pull it behind everything. See what this looks like. Nah, I'm not really liking that either. We'll put it back to the front. Okay. It's taking some thinking, guys. Okay, so we have this ball. It is the trigger. Apply, turn off, shine. Let me just delete that for right now. Okay. Apply an effect. Click. We want to select this. We want to remove an effect. Is it turn off shine? No. All right. Let me go here. I'm going to go to effects. I'm going to delete this. Some of our effects are getting a little muddy now. Okay. Let me go through a couple things. So we have our top. Or excuse me, we have our ball. 
these are the triggers. The Pokeball containers, these are where basically all of our main effects are. I think, I'm checking something here. Ball, move, and shine. Let's go to triggers. Apply ball, move, and shine, okay. And that is, got it, okay. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna attempt Triggers, click. We are going to select the Pokeball container. We are going to, I wonder if we should do toggle on and off. And we are going to do Pokeball, ah. Let me see, remove an effect. Pokeball open. Why is so difficult? I wonder what it's trying to, how do we get around this? Yeah, so Simon, the what is applying that red shine is this hover effect right here. The click, however, um, so if we look at this, so this is the hover. The click is basically rotating the Pokeball and pulling everything pretty much out just like this. So there's only two bits and they're both triggered on hovering and or clicking this particular ball container. And so this ball and shine, this is an effect that is on the ball container. And what I'm trying to do is when clicked, right i want the affected element which i want to be maybe it's the ball right self i want to remove an effect ah which is the ball move and shine let's try this it might it might take away the whole um it might take away too much but let's go ahead and try this click all right there we go oh wait Or at least it does the initial, the initial uh, piece, so that I have to re-hover on it and click. That's exactly what we want. Perfect. Okay. Shoo! <laughs> this is live. This is called live learning, guys. All right. So we got our Pokeball. Now what we want to do is we want to add a little bit more complexity. So now we're going to take that shine that we had, that white shine. And we're going to expand it like <laughs> huge. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go back to our ball, our trigger, our effects. And we're going to go back to Pokeball Open. We're going to go ahead and edit that. This is the initial state. Let's go to Pokeball. Let's see what's going on here. All right, here we go. So let's go to the white shine. And what we want to do here is this scale. We want to do like 500 or before we even do that, before I start putting numbers in, I'm going to set this to have a background so I can actually see our little thing back here. I'm going to set this to 500 scale by 500. Okay. And so Let's just see what this looks like. I'm going to set that to zero opacity. The background preview, boom, boom. It's a little extra. Okay. One of the things I do want to do before I even continue on is I want to set this section to have a um, overflow content of hide. I don't want things because that light that is going to be expanding um, is supposed to be the, the pop of the Pokeball and we're gonna be making it fairly large. So um, I, I know it's going to extend beyond the bounds of the section and I don't want to extend um, the viewport. So 
I'm just gonna make sure everything that goes outside the 100% width of our section and our height just gets cut off. Okay. Not very, uh, I'm gonna control Z that. I'm not a big fan of that. Go back to Pokeball container, boom, open Pokeball here. And I am going to set our white shine back to 100% and 100%. I think we're gonna do this a little bit differently. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done, preview. Because I like this, what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna create a shape container. Oh, not a shape container, I'm just gonna add a shape. I have my Pokeball container here, I'm going to, let's see. Or maybe what we do is in our section, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna quick add, and I am gonna do a shape. And I'm going to change this to a circle. Add to page. I'm going to bring this to the center of our page here. I'm going to make this white. And let's see, no border, uh, no shadow really. And I'm just, oops, I'm going to keep this super tiny. I'm going to do maybe 10% or 2%. Again, I'm going to center this here. I'm going to put this a little bit lower here. And essentially what I want to do when the Pokeball opens, we're going to trigger this to also expand and take over the screen. What's going on, Victor? How you doing, my friend? Glad to see you and have you here, my friend. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to call this screen takeover. And, okay, we have our Pokeball. Boom. Got our trigger. And da 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 da. Maybe we're, we're going to add another effect or another trigger. So we're going to go back to Pokeball here, or the, our ball here. On click, we're going to add another interaction. We're going to select this basic shape here, the screen takeover. We're going to hit done. We're going to toggle on and off in effect. Maybe do we want to do toggle on and off? Let me think about this because this is going to have cascading issues if we don't do this right. I think I think it's toggle on and off. Okay, so we're going to go back to, we're going to create a new effect. We're going to call this screen takeover. So our initial is fine. We're good there. Our screen takeover, we're going to take this to about like 500% by 500%. Or let's do 100%. to 5,000. There we go. That should be almost full screen. Let's do 6,000 by 6,000. Okay. Let's hit done. Preview. There we go. Now, what all we need to do now is we need to time the animation because right now we have this boom, boom, boom. Looks good. But we want this to come in a little slower. So we're gonna click our Pokeball container here. We're gonna go to effects. Or our, um, we're gonna go to a screen take over here and we're gonna go to the effects and change the timing of this. So our start, we're gonna do at 0.3 seconds and we're going to have it go to 0.6, or so point, um, 0.6. And let's just go to the initial state here. We're going to set the opacity to zero and also the scale to zero. Let's go ahead and hit done. Let's go to preview. Boom. 
Still a little fast. I want to see the Pokeball open first and then the expansion. All right, let's go to back to our layers. Screen takeover. Da, 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 da. And let's fix our timing. So let's do about 0.5, maybe end at one second. And let's just do ease out. Let's try that. Done, preview. Pretty good. Preview again. All right. And now the way to undo this, like for example, now that we have that whole shape taking over, we have layers now. Um, and I will explain to you kind of how I think about this because when we get to the end, once we f start designing the Bulbasaur piece, which is going to be the easiest part. Um, we have to create a button that basically undoes everything. Or undoes everything. All right, we'll go back to uh, screen take over here. Let's check out the timing. Uh, I wonder if we start this at zero and we just do like a really long... animation like this. I kind of like that. What do you guys think? Although what I really would like is I would like a, a, a blurry, a blurry edged sort of, um, what's it called? Not like a hard edged. Thing. So I want to look at one other thing. Let's go ahead and do, I'm gonna pull our white shine out on the page one more time. And I'm just gonna see what happens. Yeah, I don't think it's a, uh, cause I wonder if we go back I think we can scale it, right? So I'm gonna go to my white here, or our white shine, wherever it is. There we go, I think I accidentally deleted it. So we have our white shine, or where was it before? Boom. Okay. Our white shine is here. Simon says you don't think that works. <laughs> <You're not laughs> yeah, it's not, uh, you know, it's a little, it's a, it's a little too slow. So let me see what we can do. We're gonna go to screen takeover, go to the effects. Maybe we'll do, I want to see, because I want it to move a little bit faster. So maybe we'll do 8,000 at 0.8 or 0.6 seconds. Done, preview. All right, maybe we'll do a little bit more of a delay so it's not instantaneous. Let's do pop, 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 Pokeball. Nope. Screen takeover. Point three. All right. Play. Preview. I want to see the finished animation. The animations that happen end at point three. So maybe we do point five and then we do at the start of the takeover and we do 0.7. Preview. Not sure if I like that either. I think that's a little light. 
But this is part of the process, guys. It's literally trying to figure out what is it that works? What looks good? Preview, boom, bop. All right, I feel like that's a little bit better. Now, what I do want to do is I want to take this white shine and I want to make sure that when our Pokeball opens here, <clears throat> we have our white shine right here. Our animation, it's, it has 0.3 seconds. I do want it to also scale. I want it to scale maybe to 500%. But I want that scale to happen over a large period of time. And let's do, let's just set this to, set that to two seconds. And we're gonna do an ease out. Let's see how this looks. Preview. What I do want to do is I'm going to turn off this uh, screen takeover. Don't display. Preview. All right. So that's a nice little, that's a much better glow. Okay. Let's go back to edit site. Let's go back to turn on our takeover thing here. Preview. I still don't like how choppy it is. So let's go back here. Let's go to effects takeover. Maybe we increase this to about two seconds. Let's go ahead and hit done. Preview. What do you guys think about that? That was a lot smoother. I like that. Put one in the chat or a thumbs up in the chat if you also agree. But I think that works for us to move on at least to another portion. I know we're at two hours here and I really appreciate you guys hanging out. But um, yeah. Hey, what's going on, Kendia? Glad to hear you. Or, <laughs> I hear you, Anzi. How is it going, my friend? It's been a while. All right, so we have this. Yeah, Simon says I like it much better now. So this is this is much better. We're getting somewhere. It's nice, and and it's much better. Now you guys see how like how big, the uh, what's it called? How big? Like I can scroll. That's not what we're trying to have. So let's go back to our site. Let's go back to our layers. Go to our page. And section. So right here, like I said, overflow content. Set this to hide. Let's go to preview again. Boom. Now we do not have those huge scrolling things. We just have this just because of this created on Editor X. So pro tip there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get into the second part, which is, let's go over and pull in my XD, which is this piece. So we are now going to pull in our gradient, which is super easy. And then we're just going to animate everything else in. So let's go ahead and do that. So on top of our screen takeover, we are going to add a, another, let's see, I wonder if you can do, I'm going to right click into our section and just do a quick add and we're going to do a, uh, a shape, basic shape. And we're going to, we're going to kind of learn this together. We're going to see if I can actually make a gradient out of this basic ba -ba -ba, color. No. Okay. So maybe what I could do just to cheat a little bit is add an element. I'm going to grab a button and grab a gradient button. I actually think that there is a gradient container now. I might be mistaken on that, but let's actually see. I'm going to select my grid here or my section here again. Three buttons, quick add, uh, pull out a container here. Background, I guess there is no, I think there's just gradient sections. Or some sort yeah so all I'm gonna go ahead and do is I can do a couple things one I can just take this uh, gradient rectangle export that as an SVG and or a PNG or I can go to my buttons here literally grab the gradient button pull that in here um, literally delete the text and change the gradient to be 
this. So I'm going to pull this out. Just like that. I'm going to take this. I'm going to add a color. Boom. And I'm going to add my other color. Just like this. Okay. Have them on both opposite sides. I'm going to save the gradient. And there we go. So we have that. And I'm just going to scale this to be 100% width. 100% height. Or I'm going to set this to 100%. Yeah, 100% height for now. Boom, boom. Just like that. Simon says, I didn't think of doing that with the buttons. My friends, see, we learn a lot from each other uh, when it comes to, to gradients in our, our Discord. Someone actually taught me this. So I'm going to set this to... What's my call it? I'm going to set this to zero for now. Or zero opacity. And now this will be a little bit of a, a predicament because if we notice in our layers, our button is actually above every, it's above our trigger, what is, which is going to be an issue. So we have to think about this. Because if I do, essentially what we're gonna end up doing here is this, I'm gonna call this our gradient background. I'm gonna go back to our trigger, right? And we are, let's go to here, Pokeball open, or hold on, let me go to my triggers here, please. Ball, trigger, okay, hover, let's see, boom. Trying to think. What we could do is this gradient background, we could just make it super tiny in the beginning. So I'm gonna set this to about 1%, 1% height. And so when we do this. When we click on our ball and we trigger basically everything, choose on canvas, we're going to select our background gradient, we're going to hit done. We're going to toggle an effect and we are going to gradient background display. And so the initial, how we want it on click, how we want this to actually happen is we want ten thousand percent scale. There we go. And let's see here. Corners. Set all that to zero. Now I want to find the proper size. All right, this is 500. I'm going to just manually scale this. I wish I could do this by width. And honestly, what I think I should do, I'm going to click done on this really quick. I'm going to go back to my layers, go back to gradient here and I'm gonna set this to 100% here so I don't this is I know specifically how I want it to look at the end state so I'm gonna go back go back to my ball go back to my trigger gradient display um, but I'm actually gonna edit that here and so this is the beginning the initial state this is what we want. We're going to set this to 100. 
and 100. And I want this to just be I want this to just be in the center. I might need to like delete this and kind of redo it again, but it looks like that's centered to me. This the you can't do this right now, but hopefully eventually you'll be able to use alignment tools while you're actually editing things like this because that would help tremendously. Simon says couldn't you set scale to one, zero initially and then 100% after? You can, but when you're actually doing that, with when you're adjusting the hover, like for example, this 100% is not 100% viewport width or viewport height. It's not taking into consideration the container it's in. It's just saying the size of this asset right now is at 100% of the size that you've had it on your screen. So when I say, when I'm taking something 100% to 500%, it's just 5xing its size. It's not taking into consideration its actual surroundings. Okay. So let's see. We're gonna set this to. We're gonna set this to about. <clears throat> start at two seconds, or 1.9, or 1.8. And it is going to end at two seconds. I'm going to hit done. I do want to initial state. We're going to set this to zero. And the scale to be zero, zero. Let's see. All right. Close. Whew. <laughs> Guys, my brain is like. Pss, 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 pss. <laughs> I'm almost inclined to be like, all right, guys, we got this part done today. We're going to do the Bulbasaur thing tomorrow. But it's it's a learning progress to see how much all this all this stuff takes too. Simon says, but if you set the button up as you want in the real editor, then you can set the scale to zero zero. On the tr exactly that's basically what I just did I basically went back and was just like hey let's just set this to 100% and then we'll go in and set it to zero so that is the proper way of trying to do that all right let me see so we're gonna go back to our gradient background we are gonna go to our beta gradient, gradient background here and let us start this animation just a little bit further out or maybe what we do is uh we don't set the scale what was this 1.8 I'm gonna go to the initial state maybe what we do is the initial state stays at 100 100 and the opacity stays at zero so that preview boom Oh, see, this was the, what I was talking about, guys. Like, the button is literally on top of our trigger. So an easy way to go about that is literally just duplicating the ball, putting it on top, and just turning the opacity, like, all the way down. Um, but this is why it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to, like, prepare the best way to build these things going forward. Okay. Let's see. So our ball. Another thing we could do, it's probably something that will work for us, is rather having having this background over top the entire screen, what if we had it on the initial state? Let's turn the opacity up by 50 so we can at least see what's going on. The translation down by, let's say 60%. Or that's the X. Let's set this back to zero. I'm gonna set this to 60%. So it's not covering that ball. Maybe we wanna do 100% honestly. So that it's all the way down and it actually pulls up. That would be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and hit done. Let's preview. All right, so that looks interesting. I do want to slow it down a little bit. Background gradient. 
we're gonna do an ease out, and we're gonna do a 2.3 maybe. Preview, click, boom. I like that a lot better. Let's just work on the timing just a little bit. 2.5, done. Preview, boom. Okay, so now this is where we work on <laughs> everything else. All right, now there is a little bit, if you guys see, my hand has changed to be a, uh, basically a clicking button or a, uh, like a, a tap icon. So we're gonna have to figure out how to, cause we're using this gradient background essentially as a background and we don't have it linked to anything. We don't want it to link to anything. So we're gonna set this to none. Let's go back to preview. Let's make sure and see if that has not taken place. But at least this doesn't take us anywhere. This is another thing for us to like figure out how to overcome this. But again, all this stuff is pretty experimental what we're doing today. All right, now we can get into some of this other stuff, like the Bulbasaur. So we're gonna go to back to my section. I'm gonna quick add a I'm gonna quick add a container, I believe. I'm gonna scale that. And this is gonna go on top of our gradient, which will now, if I go to, uh, what's it called? Having the container on top of the gradient will actually make it so that there is not, my mouse is actually normal, okay? So now what we have to do, we've brought in our gradient background. We have to do the same thing for our container. We don't want it here initially, we want it to come in at another time. But we will do that after the fact, we actually want to design this. So what I wanna do is now we are here. We're at this point where we are designing this puppy. So I'm going to set this to have a couple things. I'm gonna have one, two, three grids. just like this, and I'm going to split that in half. And pardon me, one second, guys. My ear is itchy. <laughs> All right. So we have our three. Now I want to change grid layout, advanced mode, and I'm going to add another. I'm gonna click done and actually control Z really quick. Apply grid, other. I want two columns, three rows, just like this. Okay, now I'm gonna pull this over because essentially we're gonna have a column for our Bulbasaur over here. Uh, it's about here. And we're gonna have a one row for our header, which is basically our Pokemon and our clothes. And we're gonna have a secondary or a basically a footer where our social icons go again all right so let's go ahead and pull these puppies in first things first i'm going to quick add our image and this image is going to be our blue overlay just like this and let me see i'm going to try to scale this to just i'm going to see what happens if we do that all right there we go and now I'm going to go to my container, three buttons, quick add. I'm gonna grab another image. We're gonna grab Bulbasaur. I'm gonna pull him right here. Just update like that. I'm gonna click my cog wheel. I'm gonna reset image. And I am going to pull him to a size that I'm happy with. Now, for those of you wondering how to get that gray out from the background, pretty pretty easy. I'll do that in just a second, but I wanna get Bulbasaur into be horizontally and vertically where I want him to be. I'm gonna select my container, go to my inspector, and I'm gonna drop this background all the way to zero. Oops. 
just like that. So we, now we get that green coming through the back. Now, really quickly, I do want to select my container, do set this to don't display. Okay, we have this green container here. Now it's a little bit see-through and I'm curious why it's being shown as see-through. Let's figure this out. Gradient, but nah. Let's go to preview really quick. Okay. Yeah, it's actually really curious. Text, border, corners. Yeah, I wonder why it's just showing. Yeah, no idea. But we don't have that problem in the actual site. That's what matters. All right, let's go back here. Boom. Let's continue editing. So first thing, I'm going to come back, make sure I'm holding and selecting my container. I'm going to come in, I'm going to grab another Pokemon logo, change image, I'm going to grab this puppy, boom, update, I'm going to make sure that it is reset here, I'm going to pull this Pokemon right in here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to quick add. Make sure my container is selected. Quick add. Da -da -da. And another image. Where are we at? Boom. Change image. And we are going to grab our clothes here. Reset the image so we have the aspect ratio we want that we exported it as. There we go. We'll put it right here. Maybe we'll size it up just a little bit. We're going to center it just like that. And let's see. Our next bit is these these pieces are going to be really easy. I do want to grab our I'm going to grab two lines here. Kimberly says is the gradient not available in shapes yet? I don't believe they are so far. And it could be the case. Maybe it's not showing because it's a button, but I really don't, you know, I'm not entirely, sh I'm not positive. It really should be showing if it is a button, but I think it has to do something with, I know the initial state that I have. Um, it, the initial state that we have, the opacity is zero. So that's why it probably is, is doing that. That's my assumption. All right, so I'm going to go to my add elements here and I'm going to go to decorative. And I'm going to grab two lines here, vertical and horizontal, just like this. I'm going to make sure that they are white lines. Boom, just like that. I'm gonna, the height, I'm going to set to 100%. Now, right now, if you guys can see this, it is just in the middle section here. I want it to be in the top and the bottom just like this and I've held shift and as you can see it is now over every single grid cell and I am going to reduce the opacity to about something like that that works now it looks like excuse me it looks like I exported this image with a border so I'm going to go back into XD turn that border off Come back in, export it, and I'm going to replace it in XD. So change image, upload media, and I am going to go back into I'm like, where did I export it to? <laughs> Initiatives, technical, boom. this let's update it there we go line is gone maybe we'll make this a little bit smaller so we don't see all the artifacts 
but I feel like he's gonna need to be uh, a pretty big okay now I do want to I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna create a horizontal line just like this I'm gonna take a look at what percent opacity we did for this we did 23 we're gonna do the same thing here we're gonna change it to white opacity is 23 and we're going to make it so that is 100% width just like this go let's take a peek all right we've got our two lines now our background image that should not be extending super far and it was so if I preview this it basically went all the way to uh, the other side of the the screen so let's see I wonder if we just do these three. We do this. Let's preview, let's see what's going on. Let me put it as don't display. You guys getting a, a what's it call it? A literal behind the the scenes <laughs> of how this the sausage is made. Now there is uh, what's it call it? There's something else blue that is showing through, and I wonder if it's just a little bit of a glitch right now. So I'm going to make sure that this is saved. I think it's auto saved. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh my screen here. Get a little back stretch in. Okay, let's go ahead and preview what's going on here. Where is this shape? Where is this color coming from? All right, let's go ahead and figure it out. Let's go ahead and turn off this uh, button here. Oh, I see. It's the background for the actual the the previous background okay so nothing nefarious all right so this can go back to where it was the only issue was this so i'm going to actually control d duplicate this gradient background i'm going to call this background placeholder Because what I want from this is when I preview this, oh, I know what it is. It's basically turning into its hover state, I believe. So let's go ahead and, so you were, Kimberly, you were spot on. Let's see. All right, regular, let's go to hover state. The hover state, I wonder if, oh, let me go ahead and delete this. We're gonna set this to there. Okay, we're gonna use that same gradient. Let's go ahead and preview. Edit. Let's don't display the gradient background. Regular, hover. <clears throat> Let me see if there's anything here in the effects. I want to... I wonder if I delete these effects. I hope I'll be able to uh, control Z. Let me go ahead and delete this. For our placeholder. All right, cool. Placeholder, cool, boom, preview. Why has it gone away? 
All right, I'm just gonna do this just for to keep everybody sane, including myself. I'm gonna export this uh, <laughs> this gradient here. I'm gonna export that, and that will be our placeholder. Exactly. Yeah, that's 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 just what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Boom, upload. Here's our Is that rectangle long enough? Oh, it's the wrong one here. There we go. I thought I could be fancy using the button, guys, but we're just gonna go ahead and Work smarter, not trying to be complicated. <laughs> Let's go ahead and update that. There we go. Full screen that. We're going to put it behind our container. Okay, now we can work appropriately. And we're going to don't display both of, both of our buttons. Okay, we're going to scale our puppy to be nice. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start adding some of our text. So I'm gonna quick add, make sure I'm inside my container, three dots, quick add title. I'm gonna start dragging, just copy and pasting. We have zero one here. We're gonna go ahead and do zoom, regular cut, or extra light for now. I can't believe this is how I can breathe now. Yeah, because I was, we were out here struggling. I was trying to, uh, you know, really work through it, and it was not. It was not complying. Okay. So this is honestly the easier part of the tutorial. Every, like, I wish I had just been like, you know what, we're doing bubble sword today. <laughs> but I wanted to make it extra complicated to see, uh, you know, what is possible. And you know, this is part of, you know, for those who ask the questions on how to get better, like literally. Trying new things gets you to places that just, you know, going through the theoretics doesn't really do. All right, so got our 101 Bulbasaur. Maybe I can actually copy like some real stuff about Bulbasaur. Um, let's see, Bulbasaur. Let me just grab that. <laughs> Works for me. Okay, we're gonna do one more text piece. We're gonna grab a quick add, a paragraph. Pull this in, double click. Boop. Make it white. And we're gonna set this to product sans. There we go. <laughs> Kimberly says, dear Editor X, give us shapes that can fill with gradients. It's coming, Kimberly. They know. They, they, they know very well. I, I think we, we have, uh, yeah, they, they know very well. But I am on your side as well. All right, Bulbasaur, boom, boom, boom. Learn more, we're just gonna very quickly. Container, just like that. We're gonna go to our buttons. I'm gonna grab a gradient. A proper gradient button used for gradient button purposes. <laughs> we're gonna click the inspector go to design we're gonna grab we're gonna have a little bit more corners here we're gonna go to 99 so we know it's rounded we are going to change the gradient here I'm gonna figure out what we have here for a gradient okay for green I'm just gonna copy this Go in here, I'm gonna delete this, go in, add a color, paste, add. Change the opacity here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Got this, 0062FF. Go in here, add a color, boom, pow, shazam. 
Is that the real color? That doesn't look like the real color. I guess it is. All right, we're just gonna turn down the opacity like a lot. So we have 19 opacity and 44. So I'm gonna set this to 19. And that green, I'm gonna set this to 44. Okay. Now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my borders. I'm gonna set this to one. And that really should be it. Let's go ahead and change the text. Let's do learn more. And I can change the font in this by going to text. And we're gonna go to, again, we're gonna go to product sans. And we are going, is that what this is? I think this is Montserrat, of course. Montserrat, and we're gonna bring this down to 17 pixels. That means I'm gonna make the, the button a little bit bigger. Okay, we have our learn more. Okay, now we're gonna add in our evolutions here. So I'm going to push this stuff a little bit. I'm gonna select it all, I'm gonna move it up with my arrow keys. Just like this. Might make Bulbasaur just a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll drop this to like 150. Not one, th oh God. <laughs> 150, I'll we'll drop this to maybe 55. Pull that in, pull this in. Duplicate control D. Drag this down. We'll just type in evolutions here. Semicolon. And we'll add some character spacing. We have about 1.5 or 105 here. So what happens if we just do two? Definitely not. Okay. We're just gonna eyeball it. Right around here. No, a little bit less. The, the, <laughs> a little bit less the... Alright. And I'm sure it could be a little bit more. Alright, next. Last three things. And then we can start animating everything together. So, quick add. Quick add a image. Change. And I'm going to get all of our... pieces here. Okay, squeeze these down to a nice size and pull them right here. Control D, change image. I'm going to grab Ivysaur. Control D, change image, and then we get Venusaur. Alright, I'm going to select all three holding shift, one, two, three. Go to my inspector. Layout and make sure I'm aligning these things horizontally. I'm going to see if I can squeeze these together actually. Shifting them over just a little bit. Okay, I can place these in a container. I'm gonna make sure that these assets are horizontally distributed nicely. I'm gonna make sure that there's no extra space within this container. Just like right here, there's 33 pixels at the bottom. We don't need that. Perfect. So this, honestly guys, this was like the easiest part. <laughs> like if it was just this, we could have been done in like, honestly, 30 minutes. But, Brandon is extra, and we try to do a lot of things. Okay. So I'm going to take this social container here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to our container up top here. I'm going to paste. And I'm going to take this 
here and size it up just a bit more right here all right so now the last finishing touches is I am going to select all of these pieces here and I am going to add them into their own container replacing container and I'm going to make one two three four five and six rows so other we're gonna set six rows just like this apply in row one I'm going to place my one here row two I'm gonna place Bulbasaur row three I'm gonna place my paragraph row four I'm going to put my button perfect row what is this row five is just going to be evolutions and row six is purely just going to be our container now to make sure everything squishes nicely or has the proper space i'm going to set i'm going to click on my container change grid layout advanced mode and i'm going to make all of these grid cells contract to the actual height of what is inside them so instead of min max or a minimum height we're going to set to max content max content max content max content and you, as you guys see some of this stuff is going to start shrinking max content so you go there see right there now the reason it doesn't go all the way is because evolutions probably has some margin underneath of it and then we are going to also set this to max content perfect and I can also for example if I want to control the um, the spacing uh, for example, like this is a lot of space, right? But what if I want this to be a little bit closer to Bulbasaur? Let's talk about that. First off, let's go into these elements and sniff out some of the margin here. So the unnecessary margin. Here, 26. I'm going to set that to zero. Grid container. Let's go back in here. Max content. Da -da. It looks like this container here might have some margin underneath so let's take a look well first off let's zero that out let's zero this now there there seems to be some sort of margin that is being like hey don't touch the bottom of this container so let's try to weed that out really quick it might be Let's go here. Minimum height. Let's set this to none. Here we go. Minimum height. Set this to none. There we go. So there was just a discrepancy. I was basically telling the grid to make sure that it was max content, but there was an overriding factor in here, which was essentially make sure the container is at a minimum width of 500 some pixels. Okay. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to select our Bulbasaur piece because there is some unnecessary space but is part of the actual text block. And I'm going to add negative margin to this. So maybe around 40 pixels. Oh, not up top. Oops. At the bottom. So negative 40. There we go. Negative 20. Negative 15. Let's just do negative 10. That should be fine. Negative 10. We're going to add some spacing here. Maybe we'll do... How much spacing do we have here? About 35 pixels. Spacing between this and this is about 50. We'll just do... We'll do 35. And then from here to here is about 28. So we'll just do 20. We'll add a little bit more to this. Let's do 50. All right, so we're looking pretty good, guys. The last thing I want to do here is maybe this. We're gonna go up top here. We're kind of gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do negative 10. Try to bring that 
one a little bit closer to Bulbasaur. I think that works for us. Let's preview very quickly. All right, now the only thing that probably would want to fix is this line is kind of going off here. Not necessarily, it's not, you know, a big uh, killer or whatnot, but, you know, I would like it to stop right at here. And the easiest thing that honestly we could do without actually drawing the lines is <laughs> literally just exporting these two, um, all these assets together, just grouping it just like this. Putting it back to where it was. Right here. Exporting this. Boom. So now it has the lines in it. And we could, you know, just replace. Boom. Change image. Upload. The only thing, the only discrepancy it will have is this line might not be truly in alignment with uh, how we set up the grids. So I'm going to do, I'm going to open it here, or wait, let's see. Right here, boom, 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 open. And I'm going to rename this. Uh, let's say background plate with lines. Let's go ahead and update. Okay, so we have our lines there. Let me go ahead and, as you guys can see, they're in very different spots. <laughs> very, very different spots. So that's why I was inclined to actually make new ones. So let me don't display these so we can actually take a look at what this looks like. Okay. So like I said, these, let me preview these lines don't really add up with what we built. So that's kind of why I was just like, let me just go ahead and, because when we make this responsive too, the lines will need to be moved. So I just wanted to show you guys kind of how this turned out with me just exporting um, the, the lines on the back plate. So I think what I'll do here is maybe, Maybe what I could do is like pull it back a little bit and see what that looks like. But during responsive, like I will have to keep in mind how to keep this line in that particular spot throughout responsive breakpoints. Kimberly says, what about putting them in a repeater? Which pieces? Um, let me see. If you're referring to this, it definitely could be in a repeater, but you know, I was just easier for me to just duplicate, duplicate, duplicate with the three images. Okay, so we have this. Now the question is, how do we, I really wanna fix this. <laughs> he looks not cute. So let me go in here, let's go and edit in Photoshop. And I'm gonna actually clean him, uh, clean his edges up a little bit. Again, another reason why I'm pro XD So I can come in here, I can put a, just a black background in here so I can see, oops. Put this back here, black. And let's come in here and fix some of this stuff. So I'm gonna lock the pixels of this guy here and I am just gonna go in and try to get rid of some of these, uh, this white on the edges here. I'm just selecting some of the color and just painting it in so we don't get any of those white artifacts. There we go. Same thing here. And if I want it, I can just reduce the opacity, maybe like 45, so that we don't get too much a harsh Boom. Okay. And I know some light is okay. I just don't want like the jagged 
some of the jagged stuff that we have seen going on here. Okay. Turn the background off, save this puppy. And the changes that I made here should be made here. It does look a little bit better. Export this. I'm going to rename bulb and I'm calling V3. Control export. I'm going to close Photoshop for now. Back in Editor X. Come here, change image. Upload media. And we'll get bulb V3. Select it and then do an edge shrink and then do Ooh. Very true. That would have worked like much better with the, the edge shrink. I've not tried that before. You gotta show me how that works. <laughs> Sounds like a Wednesday conversation. Um But okay. So now what we're going to go ahead and do, and this is the final portion. I'm gonna try to keep this really simple and not overcomplicated. Um we can get more fancy later. But let's go back now to, I'm going to go to our container. I'm going to call this bulb container. And really quickly again, your piece has fallen out. I'm going to set this bulb container to an initial. Let's see. I'm like, how do we want to do this? So we have our adjustments. Oh, here it is. Opacity. I'm going to just set this to zero. Okay. And our image here, we're also going to set this to opacity of zero. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to go back to our Pokeball here. <clears throat> oh, and our bulb container thing here, we gotta, even though we have a hundred or zero opacity, it's still blocking our stuff. So what we wanna do, is we're gonna set this to 100% Or is that the translate? Let me see. If we move this to 100 pixels, what is that going to do? All right, let me unstretch this. Width, let's set this to 100 px, or 100%. Minimum height, set this to 100%. Okay. Translate, let's do 500 px. With that does that should move it down but it's not moved what to do hmm I'm a little stuck on this one. Because I would want to, I guess, move this to the side, right? What do we do? Changes made to these properties won't show on the canvas. Go to the preview. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was, I was like, this that should definitely be moving stuff. So let's, 100% Y, let's go to preview. All right, so it's not there, perfect. Now what we need to do is, let's go ahead and we do have this image that is still back there. We're going to have to do the same thing. Translate Y 100% so it's down below. OK. 
Okay, preview. I should now be able to hover back on the Pokeball. Perfect. Boom, bow. Perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to add back into our hover interactions. Let's go back to our Pokeball container. Let's look at the effects. Pokeball open. So all this stuff, boom, 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 boom. White shine, yes, done. All right, let's go to the ball. This is our trigger, let's go to trigger. So click, we're gonna select our, on canvas, we're gonna select our gradient background here. We're gonna hit done. We're gonna apply an effect or really toggle on and off. Effect, we're gonna set this, custom, gradient, background opacity we're gonna set the opacity to 100 and the translation we are going to set to zero so let's check the let's check out the initial all right perfect it's basically down below by 100 percent the opacity is zero where we want this to be is have a hundred opacity and move up to 100 yes okay and we're gonna set this to, it's gonna start moving at, I think it's 1.8 we did it last time, to 2.4. And we're gonna do this on an ease out. And let me see, let's preview that so far. We got this, boom, boom, that green should pop up. All right, that was a little, was a little funky. You choose your Pokemon, bop, boom, pow. Okay, let's figure this out. Buggy time. All right, first off, I do want to delete these, uh, these gradient backgrounds that we had as uh, kind of placeholders here. Just delete, also delete. So we've got this, let's go to the effects. So it's gonna start at one point, I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna set this at one second. Maybe at 1.8, starts coming in. There we go, that's just how it should look. Okay, preview, open up. Why does it do that? Why does it just shoot in? So let's check on the initial state. Hmm. So that works, but what is this? I wonder if I delete this, what happens? Hey, what's going on, Corey? Corey is asking, is Editor X like XE? Honestly, from a design perspective, yes. However, you do need, there are some, what's it called? To answer in a very simple, simplistic manner. It is very familiar to those who use XD and design platforms in general. However, um, I just like working from XD to uh, Editor X. So I hope that answers your question. But in general, if you have a or work in a design platform, Editor X is literally um, very comparable. But Editor X is to build and take projects that you make, for example, uh, in your design platform or whatever. Like I wanted to kind of create a website that went or allowed somebody to choose their Pokemon. On hover, it highlights the Pokeball. When you click it, it pops open, turns to white, goes to a green gradient, and then brings the Pokemon that uh, that you got essentially from opening that Pokeball. So far, so good, but uh, I, gotta, I gotta figure out this gradient thing. So let's go back to our ball trigger here. It must be the actual 
I wonder if I delete this. I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to create an effect. And add custom gradient display. Okay. So the initial state is here. Yes. The gradient display is moving this up to 100 or to zero, zero, and to have, yes. So we play it, it should look like that. Let's go to timing. Let's do one second to 1.6 seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and hit done. That looks good. Now I want to trigger that through selecting this ball. Trigger. Choose an element. We're going to grab image or our gradient here. Apply an effect, toggle an effect, gradient display. Okay, so it's back there. Let's go to preview. Why it be doing that? Why does it just kind of like push through? I'm going to set this to don't display really quick, the Bulbasaur. I'm just trying to figure out why it could, what is causing it to do a little bit different than what it is showing us it's supposed to do. Let's go to the screen takeover effect. I want to see what this is. We got the 0.35 to two seconds ease out. Simon says it's 10 p.m. and getting close to my bedtime, so I gotta head out. Enjoyed seeing the creation process. Much love, Simon, and thank you so much for hanging out. Um, we will see you very soon. Corey's saying, yes, thanks, looks great. Now I'm going to have to go back and watch all your tutorials on EdRx. I use Divi at the moment. Amen. Like. I have not popped into Divi, but I have used Webflow and I have used EditorX. And let me tell you, like, EditorX is just so much better because I actually get to be a designer versus having to be a pseudo developer. So that's from my standpoint. Simon says, I hope I won't be super late for the design chat, th though probably will be. <laughs> You'll be good, Simon. I think uh, we'll figure something out for Thursday. But we'll all make it. We'll all have fun. We'll ha all have a chance to chat. But enjoy your night, and uh, I will see you soon. Okay, let's see. <sighs> I wonder, though, like, why... I'm going to try to do... I'm going to make something a little bit silly. So I'm going to select this image here, this Pokemon image. I'm going to try to just make a trigger. I'm going to add a trigger, a hover trigger. And I'm going to make it affect the gradient. Because I want to just see if I hover on the Pokemon thing will we get the correct effect because if not that just means there's something wrong all right let's go to image hover display You know what? I think I might have found it. Possibly. Okay, so here. What happens if I just send this to 80? Okay. So there's our gradient. 100 translate. Oh. That's not what I was trying to do. Well, that's not, the hover of this is not working. Let's try another piece. Let's delete that. Let's make it a 
click instead. Choose image, yes. Toggle, effect, gradient display. Let's hit done, preview. So there must be something wrong with this. And I have an inkling that it might be what's kind of going on here. So I'm going to set the translate to zero. I'm going to set the opacity to 100. And I'm just going to go to the effects. And I'm going to do gradient display here. Go to the initial state and I am going to do the translation here. So 100% Y, yes. And I will fix this to one second to be 1.6 and set it to ease out. And we'll hit done, done, preview. Oh man, this is, this is so irking me. All right, let's see. Let's see, Kimberly said, did you put the gradient translation to the bottom on the initial? I believe I did, so let's see. Initial, so right here, we have 100% right here. So if I do 50, it should start here. And I wonder if I set this to 100, to, to zero. But the uh, the initial, and then this is this, so it should be fine. I'm just like, please. Okay, so that works. Let's try to. I don't know what I did different. <laughs> okay. Let's let's take it slowly. All right, initial state. Let's do. Let's just do. Let's do 99%. Let's preview. Nonde? Why was it fine at 50? All right, let's try. One more time. Initial state. Let's put this back to 50. Let's preview. Yeah, like why does that work? Why is that fine? Let's try 80. Preview. All right, I like that. Let's stick with that. And so all we're gonna do now <laughs> is we are going to animate everything else in, okay? We're going to pull in, we're going to go into our ball here. We're going to add a trigger. On click, yet again. We're going to select our Bulba container, or our Bulbasaur container. We're going to hit done. We're going to select a, we're going to toggle in effect. Custom. Okay, let's open this, let's actually turn this on. And I believe, we want this to be zero. There we go. The initial state is right down there. We're gonna set this to 80 and an opacity of zero. And we're gonna also set this to, let's do, let's do 1.5 to, um, let's just do two. And let's do uh, ease out. Done, preview, let's see what's going on. No. <laughs> well, everything was going too fast, hold on. 
why did that pop up first? Okay. Let me see. Let's go back here. Let's go to effects. Oh, okay. So this actually didn't change. The initial state, for whatever reason, it decided to, it should just be zero to 0 0.3. I did the wrong timing bulb container this should be 1.6 to about like 2.6 maybe 2.3 we'll just start off with that <clears throat> ease out let's play yeah we'll just do that preview all right we can we can pause that a little bit more delay it a little bit more rather let's do 1.8 And we'll do 2.4. Okay. Preview. All right, there we go, guys. <laughs> and we have this, obviously we can change the gradient of that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me grab this bald container. I'm going to go to the design or the layout here. And I'm actually going to set the opacity to 100 so I can edit this. Mm. I already forgot what I wanted to edit. Oh. <laughs> it was the button. Design, regular, hover. I'm going to switch to this gradient. And let's go ahead and... I wish there was a nice opacity switch. But for now, that works. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is... Let me go to my container. Let's go to my layers and actually put this puppy back where it was via the adjustments. Translation, 80%. And opacity, 0. Preview. I think I blew up some things. Let's check here. Initial state, boom, boom, bulb. We want 100% opacity and we want here, yes. Okay, now guys, there is a lot more complexity that you can have. You literally can bring that, uh, you know, you can bring this piece in from the side. You can bring in Bulbasaur next. You can bring in the O1, the Bulbasaur, the paragraph, the um, the learn more, all those things, you can animate those and add to the complexity. But today, because we are running almost literally in three hours, we are not going to be doing that <laughs> today. But if you guys want to join tomorrow, we might have a little bit more fun. We are going to be making the bubble sore piece responsive, but uh, we're going to try to figure out how to, we might have time to dive into a little bit more things, but I know today wasn't super concise. I'm seeing how the open format works. If it works for you guys, it works for me. Um, but uh, yeah, we would love the feedback in the Discord in the description down below. But I wanna, I wanna do, I wanna try something. I'm gonna go back to the initial state and rather then I think the initial state was at like 80. Oops. All right, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. All right, let's figure out what's going on. Play, that comes up, yes, okay. So this goes 
there. The initial state is 80%, but I want to do 80% from the like the left or the right. So I'm going to go ahead and press play here. There we go. I think that looks a bit better, especially. And I cannot click because this bulb container is in the way. Eighty preview. There we go. Boom, boom. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's see. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate it. <laughs> the support on this really long uh, escapade of a project. Now, what I'm really curious about is, for example, this item here, this little clothes thing that we have. I'm interested in turning this into a click trigger. So I'm going to see if I can go to triggers, add a trigger, click. I'm going to set choose a particular item on canvas. I'm going to choose the Pokeball container and click done. And I'm going to toggle on and off an effect and I want to toggle off the Pokemon open. I want to um, select the bulb container and I want to toggle on and off and affect the bulb display I want to toggle on and off the gradient display and I think there might be other ones but let's see what's going on right now ball click boom 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 click over here boom boom we missed one. We missed the, the shape. Let's click back on this. Let's add one more interaction. Choose. We're going to select our screen takeover. Done. Apply an effect. Toggle on and off an effect. Screen takeover. Boom. Preview. Bam. Bada bop. Boom. Pow. Close. There it is, guys. Cyclical. <laughs> <laughs> my back okay all right there we go guys we have the full cycle this is looking pretty good i am very happy with this um of course this can be sprucened this can be sharpened um but i'm pretty happy with this for uh, three hours time and not having uh done this before now for those of you guys who are about to scream at me about the social icons not being clickable if you want them to be clickable it's super easy all you got to do is um, first off, I want to, let me find them social container here. I'm going to apply grid. I'm going to do a three by one apply and I am going to stuff. Social container. Boom. I'm going to make sure that all of these are centered in a grid cell. Okay. And I'm going to name these. So this is Twitter. This is Facebook. And this is IG. Okay. And I'm just going to add a button on top of each. So I'm just going to add a button here. Go to my layers, control X, and I'm going to go inside of here. I'm going to paste inside of our container. I'm going to place this in cell one. I'm going to make sure that it is 100% of that width container. I'm also going to set this to 100% as well. I'm going to make sure it fits right within that block, just like that. I'm going to turn the background off. I'm going to turn the text or change the text. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to call it. Oh, this is IGBTN. 
I would just link this to IG. I would just go to link and I would set this to web address and I would put Instagram address right there. But pretty much control D, make sure that this goes in the second uh, grid cell, make sure it's 100% width, 100% height, make sure that it goes within that cell using my alignment tools, recall it Facebook, BTN, control D, put this in the third, set it to 100%, use my alignment tools to put it in there, and this would be Twitter BTN. Okay, let's preview this puppy. Um, I think the only reason that it's not clickable is because that there's something over top of it. I wonder, can I put this stuff? I could put it on top because I'm sure it's this that is blocking it, but we all know if I push it down even further using this, like if I push this down 60, let's see, or to 90, like, okay, so we see the hover animation, we can turn those off. We're easily just going back to containers, taking this, go to hover. 0% opacity, hover 0% opacity, and hover 0% opacity. Preview, boop. Why? Okay, must not have saved on the Instagram one. Boom. Hover. There we go. Preview. All right, so now we have our click, our clickable links down here. We have our ball. All right. So there we have it guys. I'm gonna try to publish this and see what it looks like. Again, like I said, tomorrow we're doing the responsive. So if something breaks, please don't yell at me <laughs> when we look at this. All right, let's go ahead. We'll wait, wait, wait for that to publish really quick. And I'm sure something will, will break. But if not, that's awesome. All right, nothing broke. There we go guys. Beautiful, nice project, three hours. Still a lot of cleanup to obviously happen, but I'm very proud to uh, have made this with you guys. And I can't wait to spruce it up even more tomorrow as we bring it to responsive. And um, yeah, so nice work. Thank you guys for <laughs> hanging out. Hey, what's going on my friend? Glad to, dude, it's been a while since we've talked. I, I've been loving the Instagram content that you've been putting out. Um, but. Let me show it one more time just so you guys can see uh, if you guys did pop in a little bit late. But our last three hours and 20 minutes have been uh, taking this beautiful um, XD project where we were just like, hey, can we like cre create something where we can click a Pokeball or hover over it, have some interesting animation. I still don't, I like this animation better um, than, uh, it's just the fact that it has a overlay on it. So I wonder if we can actually change that. Maybe I'm gonna export this. So I'm gonna make one last change. To our shine. And I'm just gonna change the image. Oh wait, is that the white shine? No. It's Ba, ba. There we go. There we go. I hope that's the right one. It looks about right. Okay, we'll update it. Preview. All right, that's much better. That's our type of red. Boom, pow. That expanding thing, it could be a little bit smooth. We can have spent time creating a, another asset where it was a little bit blurry. Again, <laughs> I just wanted to see if we could do this, especially for not at all knowing how this was going to uh, be at all completed. But what's important is, guys, like we didn't touch a single line of code. All of this is published. It's usable on uh, desktop. And it looks good. I'm pretty happy. So with that said, I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. We're going to be taking this puppy to uh, really be 
a um, a responsive application and our website. And uh, with that said, I want to thank you guys for hanging out. For those who have stayed all the way through, especially those who are brand new from ADP list. It's a pleasure meeting you guys. And I can't wait to have more conversations, more episodes, segments, etc., with you guys to learn how to design better, create no code websites even better, and uh, just have fun with you guys. And to answer any questions that you have about design, career, business, things of that nature. And uh, with that said, I hope you liked this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. And hopefully in the Discord, again, all those things are linked in the description. And again, if you haven't already, I know, I swear this is the last thing. We have, in honor of our EditorX challenge this month, it is all on Hover Interactions. So, if you guys want to win some really cool prizes, that being, two free one-year EditorX Premium plans and also be the named the creator of the month where we feature and EditorX features you on their social platforms and throughout their entire communities. So if you guys want to check out EditorX, download or not download it, just open up a sign up for free and start creating some things and creating some hover interactions kind of like we've done today, which are super easy. You guys can sign up again, link in the description. It's free and you can win some pretty cool things as long as you submit your work by September 20th. So that is it. I will leave that for today and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day and we'll talk soon. Bye.